Chapter 51, Part 1 Mira had just registered a mission for Macau and heard the president tell him the whole story. In other words, the president took advantage of Rhodes' financial difficulties and persuaded him to take on the mission. Don't make it sound like I'm driving him away, but that's pretty much it, Makarov said. Help me choose the right one. Mira looked at Rhodes. What kind of mission does Rhodes want to try? It's best to have a high safety factor, to be able to travel not too far away, not to be delayed for too long, and the reward is still. At this point, Rhodes paused. Well, isn't that too much? So you know. Makarov sighed and jumped off the counter deftly. Forget it. You can decide for yourself. Rod was like a graduate interviewing for a job for the first time. In the president's eyes, ordinary work was just like that. But Rhodes felt uneasy that he didn't know the specific work content, what to do specifically, and what to do if he didn't do it well. Actually, you don't need to pay too much attention to the president's words. Mira didn't want to persuade Rhodes to accept the task. In her opinion, there would be no harm in practicing for a while longer. Everyone in the guild is free. Even if Nabu is like that, the president will not force him to go out. I just don't want to be like that, and I can't always live on borrowed money. Rod said, please help me choose one that is within my capabilities. It should be fine if I make more preparations. Okay, Mira can see Rhodes practicing every day and knows his strength very well. However, for the first mission, it is best to familiarize yourself with the process and have a little training effect. Well, take care of the newcomers a little bit. Mira pulled out a task list. That's it. Rhodes looked over and saw wanted written on the top of the task list, and it was blank below. Empty? Well, because there is a commission for today that I haven't had time to write down, Mira picked up the pen, leaned on the counter, and started writing one stroke at a time. Today's commission? You should publish it when you and the president are out, right? Rhodes' eyes followed the movement of her pen tip, and lines of delicate handwriting appeared. Escort mission. The client is required to escort the client to Rockers, the capital of the kingdom of Fiori, and return safely. Remuneration. 20,000 J scheduled departure time. 8 a.m. on August 23rd commission time. August 22nd, going to Rockers? Rockers, the capital of the kingdom of Fiori, is also known as the capital of flowers and is the most prosperous city in the country. Of course Rhodes understood this important common sense. If you want to go to Rockers, you can take a horse-drawn carriage heading west from Magnolia and you can arrive there on the same day. It's even faster to take the canal waterway down the river. The key is that regardless of land or water, the most commonly used routes are similar to official roads and national roads. Even civilians can travel back and forth without worries, and the safety factor is quite high. In other words, taking this route requires hiring a magician as a guard, which means that the client is being targeted, either life or property. This will add many uncertain risks to the trip. Rhodes thought he had to figure out why the client was being targeted before he could decide whether to accept it or not. However, just after he made a well-founded analysis, the pin tip in Myra's hand moved lightly and wrote the last line. Client. Mira Jane Strauss, Rhodes raised his head. Ah? Mira looked at him and asked with a smile. Ah what? Mira this? Rhodes didn't know what to say. Is this creating a task without a suitable task? Mira said. I really want to go to Huadu tomorrow, and I just want to find someone to go with me. You just need to say this, and the people in the guild who are willing to accompany you can line up from the counter to the door. Ah. He is very good at complimenting people, Mira asked with a smile. Is Rhodes one of them? Of course. After all, I have always been taken care of by you, Rhodes said. There is no need to release a special commission. Mira raised a finger and shook it slightly. Don't worry, under normal circumstances, when an inexperienced newcomer goes out to work for the first time, the guild will arrange for a senior magician to accompany him, in order to help newcomers familiarize themselves with the work process and handle emergencies. As for me, I can be considered a senior mage. Although I can't fight, you can ask me any questions during the mission. So, Mr. Rhodes, Fairy Tales Wizard, do you want to accept this commission? I accept it. Rhodes smiled. His good intentions should not be let down. But he felt like he was being given free reign. Then, as the president's assistant, I agree with you to accept this commission. Mira deliberately spoke in a very formal tone. She took out her seal, stamped it on the order form and filled in some information in the register. This means that the commission has been approved by the guild and officially handed over to Rhodes. Mira handed the stamped order form to Rhodes. Okay, now you can take this to see the client, Miss Mira Jane Strauss, and confirm the details of the entrustment. Rhodes took the order form. His eyes stayed on the red seal for a second. 
and then looked up at his client. Myra's eyes met his, and she immediately changed into a very girlish look and tone. Ah, are you the magician of fairy tale who is responsible for handling my request? I'm sorry, but in order to confirm your identity, can you let me see the order form and your guild crest? Why do you even use honorifics? Is this so dramatic? Rhodes nodded mechanically, handed back the order form he had just received, and lifted up the half sleeve of his left arm to show his coat of arms. As expected, it's fairy tales magician. I was so rude just now. Mira folded her hands together and bowed lightly with an apology. After hesitating for a moment, Rhodes chose to cooperate with her. You're welcome, Mira, Ms. Mira Jane. You are going to Huaduku Rockers, right? Have you made specific itinerary arrangements? Mira said cautiously like an ordinary girl. Yes, the original plan was to set off by boat tomorrow morning and arrive in the afternoon. You need to spend the night in Rockers, then take a carriage back the day after tomorrow and return to Magnolia in the evening. May I ask, Master Mage, do you have any suggestions? Rhodes was made to feel uncomfortable by this pitiful Master Mage. Please don't call me that. I have no objection to the itinerary. I just want to know why you hired a guard. Are you being targeted by someone? Mira shook her head. No, not really. I just think it's not safe for a girl to travel far alone, so I leave my safety to you on the road. Okay, I accept it. Rhodes gave the drama queen opposite him a questioning look. Is that okay? Mira returned to her usual smile and stretched out a palm. Fifty points. Failed. What? Chapter 51. Part 2. Mira cleared her throat. Now is the guidance time for the senior mage Mira Jane. Chapter 52. Part 1. First, if the attitude is too rigid at the beginning, it will leave a bad impression on the client, even scare the other party, and affect the reputation of the guild. Um, I'm sorry? Rhodes was not into the scene at first and he was definitely stiff. Second, if you easily show the entrustment to the other party without confirming the identity of the client, you should at least ask the other party's name. This is true. Rhodes didn't even think of such a thing and directly assumed that she was the client. She was the client in the first place. Complain first, reflect later. Rod realized that Mira was telling him the standard procedure for connecting with clients, not just for fun. Thirdly, the remuneration issue may be subject to clerical errors and temporary changes. This is a matter that can easily cause disputes, so it must be confirmed in person. Okay, I remember it. Rhodes nodded, thought for a moment and added, Thank you Miss Mira Jane for your guidance. Great reading. Mira took advantage of the situation and put on airs. Well, your attitude is good. Plus 10 points, I think you barely passed. Rhode was about to say something when Lucky's voice suddenly came from beside her. She deliberately pinched her throat and imitated Rhodes' tone. Thank you, Miss Mira Jane, for your guidance. Ha ha ha. Lucky and Sally, a part time waiter, laughed together. Hey. Rhodes' ears felt hot, and he felt ashamed to be imitated by others. Myra's face remained as usual. Rachi, Sally, the tavern will trouble you tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Sally said, Don't worry, I'll catch Izzy tomorrow too. Lucky said, That's right, Sister Mira, just feel free to date. Mira corrected. It's work? Yes, yes, Lucky and Sally laughed and left with the wine ordered by the guest. This kind of teasing was neither painful nor itchy, and Rhodes didn't even blush. By the way, I haven't asked you what's going on at Huadu. The weekly Soshala is going to hold a celebration for its 15th anniversary in Huadu, Mira said. I received their invitation to attend tomorrow's party, and I will probably perform a show, such as singing a song. Oh, I understand. For large companies' annual meetings and anniversaries, they invite celebrities to perform to warm up the venue and increase cohesion and influence, right? Then I'll make some preparations, Rhodes said. The ferry? I have already booked the boat, and the carriage can be rented in Huadu, Mira said. Rhodes just needs to be prepared for the trip. As expected, it is a trip packaged as a mission, or a novice tutorial. You make me look stupid as a guard, Mira said. That's what the escort mission is like. As long as nothing happens, it's totally fine. Just relax. Fortunately, my common language has improved, otherwise I wouldn't understand what you are saying at all. No, we cannot rule out the possibility of accidents. Rhodes decided to be more vigilant tomorrow. I still have to prepare something. The next day, Rhodes and Mira met at the guild and set off on time. Mila wore a women's white long sleeve shirt today, decorated with a narrow tie of the same color, which was simple, beautiful, and sun protective. The lower body is a yellow A-line skirt, which not only covers the hem of the shirt, but also perfectly highlights the slender waist. 
A small shoulder bag of the same color as the skirt hangs on the waist. The light pink high-heeled thong sandals made her small feet and exposed ankles wider and tenderer. After leaving the guild gate, Rhodes naturally took Myra's suitcase, leaving her free hands to put on the beige sun hat in her hand. Mira arranged her hair under the hat and asked casually, How are you? Do you feel nervous when you go on a long trip for the first time? Rhodes replied, I am accompanied by the senior wizard Miss Mira Jane Strauss, so I am not nervous at all. Mira laughed. Then the client, Miss Mira Jane Strauss, is relieved. The two of them played with yesterday's internal jokes like tongue twisters, talking and laughing. Mira noticed that Rhodes had to weigh his backpack after walking a certain distance, and asked, Speaking of which, what's in that big backpack? It feels heavier than my suitcase. Rhodes said, I will show you some of the necessities for a long trip when we get on the ship. There are also things prepared for you. Really? Then I'll look forward to it. There is no need to look for any ferry when taking a boat in Magnolia. The ferry that Mira booked is waiting next to a small bridge on the canal. It was a small boat with a canopy, and about four or five people could sit in the canopy. The boatman is a middle-aged man who looks quite friendly. He wears a straw hat and his face is covered with traces of wind and sun. Rhodes first handed over Myra's suitcase, jumped on the boat with the big bag on his back, and then turned around to hold Myra's forearm. Myra's hand also reached down to grab Rhodes' forearm, using the force to stand firm on the boat. The rest is up to you, Mira said to the captain, and then she and Rhode bent down and got into the awning of the boat and sat down opposite each other. Then please sit down and let's go, the uncle of the boatman shouted, untied the cable, propped it up on the shore with an oar, and the boat left the shore and went downstream. On the bottom of the boat, invisible to the boatman, a river crab swam forward quickly, five or six hundred meters beyond the boat. This was sent out by Rhodes to explore the path. Before going to the guild to meet Mira, he put the river crab into the canal. Before setting off, Rhodes observed the crewman from the perspective of a river crab for a while and found no problems. Now Rhodes will continue to let the river crab explore whether there are water bandits, water monsters, and the like lurking ahead. Be cautious when going out. After observing the bottom and surface of the water from the perspective of the river crab, Rhodes withdrew his attention. Mira put her legs together, sitting sideways in a very ladle-like posture, and her sun hat had been taken off and put aside. She was now curiously looking at the large backpack that Rhodes took off, wondering if Urza had infected him with the habit of carrying a lot of luggage with him. Come, take a look at what I have prepared. Rhodes opened his backpack and saw crystal balls one after another. The curiosity in Myra's eyes turned into shock in an instant. This, this is, the explosive magic crystal? Exploding magic crystal, a one-time magic prop. As the name suggests, it is an explosive thing. Its use is roughly equivalent to a grenade, but its power is far beyond that of an ordinary grenade. That's right. I borrowed it from the guild warehouse on purpose. Why do you need to borrow something like this? Because I'm not very good at offensive magic, I might not be able to summon wild monsters in time, so I bring these just in case. Rhodes took out two magic crystals and stuffed them into Myra's arms. You should also take two for self-defense. If anything happens, smash them hard. Probably you won't need this. Mira tried her best to keep a smile. It turned out that the preparation he was talking about meant this. However, Rhodes had another surprise. He pulled open a few crystal balls and took out a book from underneath. There is also a magic book. As long as you open it and inject a little magic power, you can activate the magic in the pages. We each carry a copy with us. Chapter 52, Part 2 Even the magic book. Rhodes was still rummaging through his bag. And the uncle who was controlling the direction of the ferry at the stern was shivering. You can read more daily new novels on FictionZone.net. Both sites share the same login details so you don't need to sign up again. Chapter 53, Part 1 Mira held two magic crystals in her hands and a magic book on her lap. She looked at the contents of Rode's bag and said helplessly, Rode, these things you prepared are enough to blow up a small village. We are just going to participate in the celebration. When I borrowed these things, the president said the same thing. Rhodes thought for a while and said, I just think it feels safer this way. I originally wanted to ask the president to help me draw some defensive magic circles on my body, but he said he didn't have that kind of thing and kicked me out of the warehouse. Alas, well, well, I seem to understand the president's mood. Mira wanted to return everything in her hand, but after thinking about it, she took a small magic crystal and put it in her bag. Thank you for your careful preparation. This is the safest time I have ever gone out recently. 
Rhodes regretfully put away the crystal ball handed back by Mira. This is also a last resort. When I become as strong as Natsu Urza, I won't be able to use these things. Wait a minute. Have you made any other preparations? There are no special preparations, just two swift crabs. Rhodes lowered his voice and leaned close to her ear. One is exploring the way in front, and the other is hiding at the bottom of the boat. If anything happens, I will immediately pick you up and jump off the boat and run away. Thank, thank you. Mira was a little worried about what would happen if Rhodes actually took over the escort mission. If there is an attack then, Mira looked at Rhodes' backpack. Um, I hope the gangster is okay. Oh, in addition to the material aspect, there is also some metaphysical preparation. Mira kept smiling and listened to him quietly. Because everyone said that Kana's divination is very accurate, I asked her to do a divination yesterday. Rhodes was not superstitious before, except when playing games to draw cards. But now in the world of magic, magic such as prophecy and divination also exists, it doesn't cost money anyway, just have some faith. Speaking of Kana's divination, Mira was still a little interested. What is the result? It is the chariot, the king's chariot that overcomes obstacles and achieves victory. Rhodes said, Kana said that the chariot represents never give up and success through hard work and overcoming difficulties. If it is a fortune telling about travel, then the fortune will be good. If it is an accounting job, then your confident and rational attitude will make the client more confident. Isn't that great? Mira said, since your luck is so good. Why do you need to prepare so many self-defense weapons? Because you need to overcome obstacles, and you have to be rational to succeed. Rhodes pointed to his backpack. Am I rational enough? Too sensible. Mira sighed softly, now as a client. I am very confident that your mission will be successful. That's good. I'll be a little more vigilant. Rhodes' view of the two river crabs on the line seemed to be a split screen in his mind. He carefully observed all passing ships nearby and every pedestrian on the shore. Mira looked at Rhodes' condition and remembered the president's instructions. The purpose of going out this time was to make Rhodes relax a little, but it's okay to bring some expendable magic items for self-defense. Would anyone keep using magic for reconnaissance when traveling? He even thought of predicting fortune in advance. However, this is actually very good. If she had been half as cautious as Rhodes at that time, Lee Santa might not have. Compared to the powerful but arrogant and reckless me back then, maybe teaming up with Rhodes would be safer, right? Lisanna's face appeared in my mind. Mira hugged her arms. It's all my fault. Mira, Mira? Mira was awakened by Rhodes' voice. Sorry, I was distracted. Did you find anything? There is no suspicious person. Is it cold in the cabin? Rhodes looked at Mira holding her arms. He took out a coat from his bag and said, Fortunately, I'm prepared for this too. That was Rhodes' only coat. In fact, if Rhode wanted to, he could stuff all his clothes into his bag. But there weren't many of them anyway. Thank you. Mira did not refuse and put her coat in front of her. The smell of the sun made her feel warm. Feeling the care from your companions in grief is the best comfort. It's not yet noon, and the cabin may be a little damp. Do you want to light a fire for you? Rhodes fingers traced through the air, and each letter was shaped into a huge magic word fire, which then shrunk to the size of a fist and turned into a burning flame. Mira was amused by the contrast and laughed out loud. This was the first time that Rhodes showed her three-dimensional text magic. She didn't expect to learn it like this. The boatman at the back finally couldn't bear it anymore. Don't play with fire in the canopy. What happened to this person? Not only did he bring a large bag of explosives, but he also played with fire in the cabin. Is he really not afraid of detonating it? Sorry, sorry. Rhodes waved his hand to make the flame disappear. As the boat goes down the river, the sun gradually rises. Even if the boat canopy blocks the sun, the air gradually becomes hotter. This is why you should take a boat instead of a river crab. It still took a while to arrive in Huadu. Mira opened her suitcase and took out a food box. I made some simple sandwiches in the morning. If you don't mind, let's eat them together. Although the taste is not as good as Mr. Cook's, you can cook. This is natural. Rhodes thought of the last time Mira purchased ingredients for Mr. Cook. I am afraid it was not that Mr. Cook had lowered his standards, but that Mira was really good at this. Don't look at me like this. I take care of Elfman myself. Mira picked up a sandwich and handed it to Rhodes. But actually Elfman is also very good at cooking. Rhodes took the sandwich. He actually brought some bread. But, at this time, all fools know how to choose and throw the bread to worm later. Elfman, do you know how to cook? Rhodes tried to imagine Elfman wearing an apron. 
He couldn't imagine it at all. Is it that unbelievable? Mira smiled. Didn't I say that Elfman is a very gentle child? She said she had said it before, but Rhodes thought it was her sister protecting her brother's image. He smiled and took a bite of the sandwich. Huh? What's wrong? Does it taste bad? Mira checked the food box. The magic of keeping it fresh should not have failed. Let's not talk about the preservation magic. The taste is a bit familiar. Rhodes tasted it carefully. It's delicious. It's different from what you usually eat in the guild. Mira smiled and said, As long as you like it, I thought you wouldn't like what I cook because you were used to Mr. Cook's cooking. So that's it. It turns out that she also made the sandwich that day. Rhodes remembered the day he just woke up, with the same taste on his tongue and the same smile in front of him. He took another big bite, chewed quickly, and complained to himself in his mind. What a cliché love drama plot. <laughs> Chapter 54, Part 1 Times such as eating and resting are often the times when people are most vulnerable to sneak attacks, and Rhodes knows this very well. So during the meal, and during the sleepy time that followed after the meal, he became more vigilant. The river crabs are ordered to cruise carefully in the canal, and occasionally put out their tentacles to observe the situation on the shore more clearly. In such a tense mood, the destination has arrived. The uncle of the boatman docked the boat. Rockers is ahead. My boat does not have permission to travel freely in the royal capital. Please disembark here. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you. After thanking one for his hard work and thanking the other for his hard work, the boatman watched Rode put the suitcase on the boat and then helped Mira ashore. The oar propped up on the shore, then shook the oar vigorously, quickly moving away from the two dangerous people. It's so exciting. These two people are carrying dangerous items that can destroy a small village. When he came to book the boat yesterday, he thought the girl was very beautiful, but today he didn't dare to take a second look at her. It's good to be alive. You must be careful when encountering fairy tales magicians in the future. Rhodes looked at the boat that was leaving quickly. Will he not pick up a few passengers or transport some cargo on the return trip? This feels like a loss. Mira held up her sun hat with one hand and squeezed the small crystal ball in her bag with the other. She looked at Rhodes with a smile in her eyes. Yes, why? Compared with Magnolia, Rockers has a more big city feel. The entire city is built on a relatively flat highland, with thick walls built outside. A river meanders from the southwest entrance of the city wall to the inner city, which is the moat outside the palace wall. Then it flows out to the drainage outlet in the southeast corner and rushes down along the high ground, forming a small waterfall. Rod and Mira came from the east of the city and could just see the waterfall wrapped in water vapor refracting colorful light. It's so beautiful. Mira couldn't help but stop and watch. Yeah, it's a pity that it doesn't match the city wall. Rhodes wanted to say that the water outlet was designed to look like a sewage outlet, but it felt like it would ruin the atmosphere. He sent the two river crabs on standby back to the summoner's rift. It's not easy to sneak in the swift crabs. We have to wait until we enter the city to summon them again. Mira stopped Rhodes from continuing intensive reconnaissance. Summoning wild monsters in the city would be too conspicuous. This is the royal capital. Don't worry about public security. Just relax. Okay. Rhodes didn't insist anymore. He was mainly worried about whether he would be intercepted at the city gate if he had a bunch of dangerous items on him. Facts have proved that it was too much to worry about. The guard responsible for guarding the city gate simply asked about his identity and purpose of visit. After Rhodes showed his coat of arms and Mira showed her invitation, he was immediately released. This careless security check made it difficult for Rhodes to believe that the security here would be very good. But if you think about it carefully, the kingdom of Fiori has been a neutral country for more than 160 years, and there has been no internal rebellion. The royal power is very stable, and it probably doesn't have much sense of crisis. Flower beds can be seen everywhere on the streets of the royal capital. The windows of the houses are also filled with flower pots, and there are even carefully tended small gardens at the door. This is probably why this place is called the Flower City. The air is filled with the fragrance of flowers, definitely good news for people with pollen allergies. Of course, in the world of magic, there might be a solution. Rhodes carefully observed the surrounding environment. What should we do next? Senior Mira Jane? Humph, according to Senior's experience, we should go to the hotel first. Mira shook the pass she had just taken. For the invitation, the magazine company has helped arrange it. I don't know if it was because Rhodes' eyes were too fierce, but he didn't encounter anyone looking for trouble or chatting with him on the road. Rocker's Garden Hotel, one of the best hotels in the capital. This is the place where Sochala Magazine held the celebration, 
and it is also the place where Mira and Rod will soon settle down. Rhodes looked at the exquisite fountains and tall buildings, almost as big as Magnolia's landmark cathedral. How impressive. Is the magazine so rich? Mira said. Of course, after all, Sochala is the most popular magazine in recent years. The two entered the lobby side by side and were warmly received by the service staff. A male waiter with good features guided the two of them and politely offered to help with their luggage. Rhodes declined politely. He was afraid that if this guy didn't pay attention, the hotel would be gone. This is your room. Please keep your key. If you encounter any problems during your stay, please feel free to ask. I wish you a pleasant stay. The waiter gently opened the door, handed the key to Mira, and said goodbye politely. Rhodes blinked. A room? Ah, the magazine didn't know that I was going to bring my companions, so they only prepared one room. What should I do? Mira showed a troubled expression, put one hand on her collar, and her voice became pitiful. Rode won't take the opportunity to do anything excessive, right? For example, a night attack or something, dark-bellied, dramatist. Luo, a gentleman, put down Myra's suitcase decisively. I'll open another room. I'm kidding, it's a suite. Just one person can stay in one room. Well, I'm just kidding too. This hotel looks like it's not something I can afford right now. Mira sighed with a smile. It's all Kana's fault. Rod is not as interesting as before. How much do you want to see someone embarrassed? Rhodes said. So I should thank Kana? One thing to say is that Kana really doesn't treat his brothers as outsiders, especially when they get drunk and hook up with each other. They don't take it seriously at all. At first, Rhodes didn't get used to it, but later they became buddies. Shy. Unless her head is held directly in her arms. Wearing armor doesn't count. Rod? What are you doing? Mira put her suitcase into the room she had chosen. When she came out, she saw Rhodes looking around in the bathroom, kitchen, and reception room. Rhodes said, check to see if there are magic crystals for surveillance. If not, there are perverted reporters who want to get your first-hand information. Well, it's really possible that Mira discovered that Rhodes' awareness as a guard is really super qualified. The two checked it carefully and found nothing unusual. Mira asked, The celebration starts at night. Do you want to take a rest first? Rhodes glanced at the satchel on Myra's waist and the sun hat in her hand. She obviously wanted to go out. He moved his arms. I've been sitting on the boat all the way, and I want to move around a little bit. What about you? Mira laughed as expected. It's a rare time for me to come to the royal capital and I want to go shopping. Do you want to come with me? Chapter 54, Part 2 Rhodes said, of course, I am a guard and I am entirely at the mercy of my client. Chapter 55, Part 1 Oh, isn't this Mira Jane? Sure enough, you also received the invitation. Before Rhodes could even leave the apartment door, he heard a slightly frivolous female voice in the corridor. He rushed out in three steps and stood in front of Mira, holding the pendant in one hand and holding up the exploding magic crystal with the other. In front of him is a girl with big golden waves wearing a purple low-cut wrap dress with a delicate face. It's just that her face looks more aggressive than Myra's. At this time, the other party looked at Rhodes who suddenly appeared, with an obviously surprised expression. Who are you? No. She looked at the dangerous items in Rhodes' hands. What do you mean? Wait a minute, Rhodes. Mira quickly grabbed Rhodes' right hand, fearing that he would throw the explosive magic crystal away. She is not an enemy. She is Jenny from Cyan Pegasus and she is also the photo girl of Weekly Sosara. Sorry, Jenny, this is my companion, Rod. There was a misunderstanding because of your sudden appearance. Mira watched Rod put things away before introducing to Jenny. I remembered, Jenny Leolette, the signature girl of the Cyan Pegasus. Rhodes had information about this person in his notebook, and because she was in the same guild as Mr. Shapiki, Rhodes paid a little extra attention. Like Mira, she is not known for her fighting prowess, but she is very famous as a model and she is currently ranked number one on the list of magicians who most want her to be their girlfriend. However, Myra's popularity has soared recently, and there is a tendency to threaten Jenny's status, although Mira doesn't care much about this messy ranking. Sorry, I'm on high alert and I was rude just now. Rhodes apologized for taking out the grenade without authorization. It's not a matter of disrespect anymore, right? That's the exploding magic crystal. It's definitely the exploding magic crystal. Jenny has a tendency to explode her hair. She is insane. Who in the right mind would suddenly take out the exploding magic crystal in a hotel? I've long heard that people at Fairy Tale are very disorderly, but I didn't expect it to be so disorderly. Rhodes frowned. Something was wrong. When this woman was pointed at by the exploding magic crystal, 
she made no move to fight back. Is her vigilance so low? Moreover, he only complained a few words afterwards, without any preparation for attack or defense from beginning to end. Is this reasonable? Sorry, sorry, I'm a little nervous because I'm tired from the trip. Rod continued to apologize, Mira explained a few words gently, and Jenny's anger quickly subsided. Mm, forget it. The fact that Rhodes almost threw the exploding magic crystal into her face was revealed by Jenny in an understatement. And she didn't seem reluctant at all, she really didn't care at all, and even immediately brought the topic back. Anyway, you are also here to participate in Soshala's anniversary celebration, right? Yes, so you are too? That's right. Jenny suddenly became full of momentum, and tonight I will show the best fashion show, and then completely defeat you. Mira said calmly, Ah, but today is just a celebration, there is no competition, right? How naive. Jenny took out a small fan from nowhere, pointed forward and said, In order to celebrate Soshala's 15th anniversary, we will publish a special issue. We invited guests will definitely appear in this weekly issue, and then, I will defeat you with absolute popularity and firmly hold the number one spot on the rankings. Mira looked like she suddenly realized, So that's it, come on. Jenny's breath immediately disappeared, and she said angrily, What kind of attitude is that? Cheer up. Because I have no plans to perform a fashion show today, so I can't compete with you. Mira herself has little interest in taking photos or being a model, and was only invited to do a part-time job. Being on that ranking list was just an accident. I didn't care. Then that's it. We have some things to do. See you in the evening? Mira smiled and said goodbye, then turned to Rhodes and said, Let's go. Wait a minute. You? Jenny stamped her feet angrily. Isn't she a little competitive? Probably. We have only met twice. Mira said, How about it? Am I more beautiful in person than in the magazine? Send a proposition. Rhodes thought for a while. I didn't pay attention to this because she was too weird. Strangeness? Yes. When most people see a stranger taking out the explosive magic crystal, shouldn't they run away immediately or knock me down? Why is she stunned there? She is also a magician, right? Is there really no problem with such a weak sense of crisis? Well, Mira didn't know what to say. Normally, no one would suddenly take out the exploding magic crystal when seeing a stranger. Moreover, for a famous beauty like Jenny, shouldn't he be excited to see her, shake hands and ask for an autograph? Judging from Rhodes' reaction later, he must have recognized it, but his attitude didn't change at all. While she was thinking about her words, Rhodes realized a terrible question. Am I the weird one? Mira suddenly stopped put her hands together in a girl's prayer gesture, and raised her head slightly in the direction of the guild. Great, President. Your goal has been achieved. Mira, Rhodes reminded, the President is still alive. That's not the point. The President specially kicked you out to do the task, just to let you know that ordinary magicians live as relaxed a life as Jenny. They don't necessarily need to have much power, and they don't need to carry firepower that can blow up a village when traveling far away. After thinking about it, Mira added, of course, it is necessary to be cautious during the mission. Although you went a little overboard today, it can give people a different sense of security. Well, I understand. Rhodes said, Thank you, President, for your hard work. I will, um, I will observe again in the future. Mira, that's okay. His willingness to leave Magnolia early is already a good start. If he tries more commissions in the future, he will naturally return to normal, right? With the fragrance of flowers permeating the air, the two of them walked through the streets and alleys, watching people coming and going, and enjoying the singing of birds and the fragrance of flowers. Although you cannot enter the majestic palace in the center of the city at will, it is still good to take a look around. Mira calculated the time and suggested, It's still early, let's go to the commercial street. It's a rare trip here, and I want to buy some clothes for Elfman. Okay. Rode didn't care where he was going, but he was a little envious of Elfman. It's great to have a sister like him. Although she usually watched Elfman fight with his companions and suffered a loss, even though she still laughed when she saw the president slap Elfman into the ground, even though, uh, dear sister, is that so? Chapter 56, Part 1 I understand the truth. Why are you following us? Looking at Jenny who entered the same clothing store as them, Rhodes couldn't help but want to take out the explosive magic crystal again. Stalker, is it okay to explode? The problem was huge. Mira held down Rhodes' backpack to prevent him from actually taking action. Jenny, are you here to buy clothes too? Jenny didn't hide anything. No, I came to you specifically, Mira asked. Is there anything else? Of course it's a showdown. 
Jenny said, even if I can't compete at the anniversary celebration, I will beat you in private. Rhodes looked at the surrounding environment. Many people began to look at this place. This was not private at all. Since you are so persistent, I can't shirk it anymore. Mira didn't know where the fighting spirit came from. What are you competing for? Just choose clothes to match in this store, and then find an impartial referee to determine the outcome. Jenny pointed at Rhodes and walked out of the aisle. In order to convince you, he will be the referee. Me. Rhodes was stunned for a moment. Although he didn't know why he suddenly had to compete, he decisively grabbed Myra's wrist and raised it. Winner, Mira Jane. Okay, let's call it a day. The loser will leave. Jenny went berserk. It hasn't started yet. Mira snickered. Jenny took a deep breath to calm down. Although he is the referee, the result is not whatever he says. Do you understand what I mean, Mira Jane? It's really cunning, but I accept it. I'm looking forward to your expression when you lose. Mira and Jenny looked at each other, and lightning seemed to appear between their eyes. Jenny flipped her hair. Well, Mr. Referee, please specify the theme. Theme. Rhodes didn't understand what kind of tacit agreement the two people had reached, and he pointed to a sign hanging nearby. This is the leisure area. Leisure? It's a very common topic, but the more common it is, the more difficult it is. Jenny smiled confidently and walked towards the leisure area. Let's wait and see. Since we have decided to compete, I will not lose. Mira also went to choose clothes with great enthusiasm. The two of them seemed to have found some fun, only Rhodes was not that happy. I was having a lot of fun shopping with Mira, but suddenly someone made trouble. This competition involves choosing clothes and changing clothes. I don't know how long it will take. Although Jenny is also pretty, but what good is a light bulb if it's not pretty? Just when he was about to wait for a long time, two beauties gave him a surprise. Transform. Transform. With two soft drinks, Mira and Jenny turned into the clothes they chose, and even their hair changed into the hairstyle that best matched the clothes. Do you all use transformation magic to change clothes? Then what is the meaning of dressing up magic? The magic of dressing up is actually putting on the corresponding clothes, and the transformation is just a change in appearance, Mira said. You won't be too hot even if you turn into a cotton padded coat in summer, and you won't be cold if you turn into a swimsuit in winter. Jenny also said, what a fuss. In order to improve work efficiency, professional models use transformation magic to achieve the effect of changing clothes. They can even secretly add beauty effects to themselves during transformation. Okay, don't talk about such boring things. Let's judge our outfits separately, Jenny said. Please try to give a fair evaluation. Rhodes looked at Mira. Mira smiled and said, as long as you speak your mind, we have a way to decide the outcome. Could it be that there is some magic that can detect lies? Rhodes thought of Warren. Or could he listen to people's thoughts, guessing that there was no point in lying? Rhodes looked at Jenny and told the truth. Miss Jenny. Looks very good. Jenny gave Mira a proud smile. Then Rhodes looked at Mira carefully. The white vest shows off your figure, and the light blue shirt looks simple and clean. The light blue denim shorts show off the slender legs without conflicting with the color of the clothes on the upper body. The black belt is neither loose nor tight, perfectly showing off the beautiful waist. The black handbag is also a good match, coupled with the baseball cap and long ponytail on the head. The youthful atmosphere is almost overflowing, full marks. Mira caressed her cheek with her right hand. Ah la, the praise is too straightforward. I'm a little embarrassed. You guy. Jenny's teeth clenched loudly. She dismissed the word, very good looking. But Mira wished she could use 3,000 words to describe it. Although the judging criteria does not depend on what Rhodes said, the differential treatment is too infuriating. Mira showed a nasty smile. Jenny, how are you? Jenny was unconvinced and said, Come again. Rhodes watched in confusion as the two returned to the casual clothing area. Mira clearly won this round. But what is the judging criteria? What is the word count of the review? It shouldn't be that simple. A few minutes later, the two chose their clothes and came back to transform again. Adhering to the principle of honesty, Rod looked at Jenny and gave her a comment of, Very beautiful. Then he looked at Mira carefully and praised her from head to toe. After Mira chose the dress and spun around in front of Rhodes, Rhodes honestly gave her a perfect score and an additional 10 points. The two people's continuous transformation competition attracted many onlookers. Although it has affected the business at this moment to a certain extent, the store manager almost laughed out loud. Two super beauties can dress up in his store for free to show off the effects of various costumes, which is a piece of cake in the sky. 
He is already thinking about how to provide high-quality services when the passenger volume will increase later. The onlookers looked at the excitement here and tried to rate them from their own perspective. Listening to their discussions, the number of supporters of Jenny and Mira was actually about the same. It's just that every time after Rhodes's sincere evaluation, a considerable number of people would be swayed by his opinions and switch sides on the spot. The guy said it very sincerely, and it sounded really reasonable. After the last round, Jenny lifted the transformation magic and returned to her original appearance. Damn it, you chose the wrong referee. The outcome of this game has absolutely nothing to do with what Rhodes said or how much he said. The only criterion is how much stunning there is in his eyes. This is a difficult criterion to judge, but Jenny can tell it. As a girl who is often stared at by many eyes, she has a keen insight into various looks. Jenny originally thought that Rhodes and Mira were from the same guild and must be very familiar with each other. In this way, no matter how Mira changes her look, it will be difficult to surprise Rhodes. Because men are all new and dislike old things. And she has the same appearance and figure as Mira, but she is also unfamiliar with Rhodes. This is a huge advantage and will definitely make it easier for him to feel amazing. This is almost a must-win competition. But, Jenny suddenly realized that she had overlooked an important factor that could affect the situation of the battle. If I had known earlier, it would be better to choose a random passerby as the referee to make the game fair. Jenny regretted it. Chapter 56, Part 2 You can read more daily new novels on FictionZone.net. Both sites share the same login details so you don't need to sign up again. Chapter 57, Part 1 So, I won. Hey, I lost. Mira was very happy, and Jenny's expression of reluctance, but having to admit defeat was so interesting. Then it's punishment time. Punishment? Punishment? I've never said anything like this before, Mira said matter-of-factly. Since it's a game that determines the winner, how can there be no punishment? Okay, don't move. Jenny watched Myra's hand reaching towards her face and closed her eyes nervously. Her scared expression was a bit cute, and the audience couldn't bear to look away. Mira curled her fingers and flicked her forehead. Boom! A red mark appeared on Jenny's forehead. She covered the place where she was shot. It hurts. Mira imitated Rod's tone just now. Okay. The loser exits. Damn it. I will win it back. Jenny angrily left. How dare you flick her forehead in front of everyone? Do you think she is a child? Jenny vowed to compete again in the future, and then made an even more shameful bet to make Mira Jane suffer even greater humiliation. Sorry. It took me so long because of my whim, Mira said to Rhodes. It doesn't matter. I'm here to play anyway, so it's quite fun. Rhodes said that he had watched Myra's dress-up show, and it was not a loss today. Jenny, I didn't participate, did I? Mira looked at the crowded store and suggested. Shall we change to another store? Rhodes nodded. Good suggestion. The clothes and accessories that Mira and Jenny had just tried on suddenly became popular products and were snapped up by a large number of young men and women. The store manager and service staff managed to maintain a good atmosphere. When they tried to find Mira and Jenny, they could no longer see anyone. How about this one? Without the rest of the crowd, Mira could finally choose clothes carefully. The purpose of this trip was to help Elfman buy clothes. A suit? It doesn't seem to match Elfman. Rhodes tried hard to imagine Elfman wearing a suit, but the next picture that came to his mind was him doing bodybuilder moves, bursting out of his clothes in one second. But I want to see the effect, Mira thought for a while. How about Rhodes helping me try it? I'm too different in stature from Elfman, right? It doesn't matter. Just buy a bigger one when the time comes, Mira said. Help me? Okay. Rhodes took the clothes and walked to the fitting room. Wait a minute. Mira stopped him again and went back to select a pile of bits and pieces. There are also matching shirts, ties, brooches, and handkerchiefs. Let's put them on together too. Okay. Rhodes walked into the fitting room carrying a bunch of things and poked his head out after a few seconds. Mira, don't you have transformation magic? Can't you just change into Elfman's appearance like you just did? Yes, Mira thought for a while, but I just used transformation magic too many times, and the magic power consumption was a little serious. Really? Rhodes wondered, does transformation consume so much magic power? Mira clasped her hands together. Yes, please. Oh, Rhodes closed the curtain again. When he came out again, he had put on a suit and leather shoes, and he looked upright, capable and free and easy. Myra's eyes lit up. Rhodes looked completely different from usual when he put on formal clothes. There are just some details that were not handled well. Rhodes held the tie in his hand and said with some embarrassment, 
I don't know how to tie this. He did take an elective course on social etiquette this semester. He seems to have some knowledge about suits, but he hasn't learned it yet. Mira smiled. I'm here to help you. She came closer, turned up the collar of Rode's shirt, and gently tiptoed to put the tie around him. This movement that resembled a hug made Rode's heart flutter, and the fragrance of Myra's hair seemed to be lingering on the tip of his nose. I didn't see clearly how she tied the knot, but with a final gentle pull, she pushed the knot to the collar and it was tied. Rhodes tried to hide his embarrassment by adjusting his collar. Mira gently pulled on the suit jacket again and tucked the end of the tie inside. It wasn't over yet. Mira took off the brooch that Rhodes had messed around with, pinned it to the open collar of his coat, folded the handkerchief neatly, put it into the coat pocket, and pulled it out a little. After doing all this, Mira gently smoothed the wrinkles on Rhodes' clothes, took two steps back, and looked at him carefully with her hands behind her back. This. This sense of deja vu when the husband is about to go out and his wife helps to sort out the clothes is terrible. Rhodes asked unnaturally, How is it? He's very handsome. He's become a lot more mature all of a sudden. And the color doesn't make him look old. He looks like a social elite at first glance. Mira said her own evaluation, and then added, It really doesn't suit Elfman. Is it hot in this outfit? It's a bit. Rhodes tilted his head and tugged on his collar. Let's look at something else. Well, I will continue to trouble you. Rhodes continued to work as a clothes hanger. Although it was troublesome to change clothes, he enjoyed it. After being busy for a while, Mira finally selected two sets of clothes, selected sizes according to Elfman's body shape, and asked the store clerk to help pack them. Seeing that it was almost time to prepare for the evening activities, the two left here and returned to the hotel. But when he went out, Rhodes suddenly noticed that Mira was carrying three bags. Ah, did you find it? Mira turned sideways, with a bit of regret on her face as she was discovered by surprise. She leaned forward slightly and handed one of them to Rhodes. It's for you. Reaching out to help carry the bag turned into reaching out to receive the gift in an instant. This feeling of surprise is indescribable. Mira continued, It's the suit just now. Because it seems to suit you very well, just think of it as a thank you gift for helping me try on the clothes. This is too expensive. Well, thank you. Rhodes chose to accept the gift. Although the more I think about it, the more I feel like a poor boy goes shopping with a young lady and is given a set of luxury goods, but just return the favor later. According to the president's wishes, he is already capable of handling some well-paid commissions. I have to take on a real mission when I go back, be more stable, and find a strong teammate. I don't know if Urza's thigh would be able to be hugged because she had been punched before. While thinking, the two of them had returned to the hotel. People were coming and going in the hall and many people stopped to say hello to Mira when they saw her. Judging from their appearance, they should be reporters and editors from the magazine, who have come here to prepare in advance. The two went upstairs, went back to their room to rest for a while, and prepared to go to the banquet hall where the celebration was held. Rod changed into the suit he just bought at Myra's request and left his dangerous backpack in the room. However, Rhodes felt unsafe, so he still carried a thinner magic book. Before leaving, Rhodes moved the table and chairs to make enough space, and then summoned a river crab to stay and look at the backpack. Fortunately, the room is big enough, otherwise it would be difficult to let the river crab out. Chapter 58, Part 1 Jenny, what a coincidence. By chance, the two met Jenny again when they went out. At this time, she had put on a gorgeous long dress, and her bangs had also been adjusted, probably to cover the red marks on her forehead. This time Rhodes didn't take out grenades at the meeting because he didn't bring his back. Watch tonight's performance carefully. The most popular one hum. Halfway through her words, Jenny held up her skirt and went downstairs. Suddenly she remembered that Mira Jane didn't care much about today's performance, and it was useless to say so. Rhodes asked, How hard did you use to play her? Maybe she will hold a grudge for a long time. It only took a little effort. Mira made a gesture that was suspected of insulting Han. She just couldn't be reconciled to losing the game. It's okay. The guests invited today are not just Mila and Jenny, but also some models who are less famous than them. One after another, the outstanding-looking models were dressed up in charming, sexy, or cute styles. They all had their own characteristics and seemed to be planning to show off their talents today. In addition to the models, some actors and singers who had done promotions in Sosara Weekly also entered the venue one after another. Rhodes had a brief understanding of the entertainment industry in this world. There are magic crystals here that are specially used to show movies, and their popularity is quite high. Therefore, excellent movie actors are also sought after by many people. 
Rocky has even been complained to by entertainment companies for groping female artists, or so Mila said. The spacious banquet hall has been decorated, not to mention decorated with lights and decorations, and signs such as celebrate the 15th anniversary of the founding of the publication are hung on the front and rear. In front of the hall is a semicircular stage, with a bright red curtain separating the front and back stage. There are more than a dozen large round tables placed in the hall, filled with exquisite meals and various drinks. However, there are no seats set up. People who want to participate in the celebration may move around and communicate freely. Mira entered the venue with Rhodes and did not attract much attention because she was not the only girl with a male companion. Various small circles have already gathered in the banquet hall. Only when they see people they are interested in getting to know, or people they admire to a certain extent, will they temporarily leave their small circles and try to say hello. There are reporters and editors over there. Most of them are talkative. There are a few novelists over there, and there may be some weirdos. And the celebrities over there may be a little hard to talk to. Mira carefully introduced several small groups to Rod, and then went backstage to prepare for the performance. Rhodes, who was backstage, couldn't follow him because he might be kicked out as a pervert. He didn't feel much about the actors, singers, and other celebrities here. So he planned to find an inconspicuous place to eat quietly until Myra's performance was over. But it seems that no one intends to make him clean. Hello, I am Raper Tail, a reporter from Sasala Weekly. Are you the wizard of fairy tale? A man with glasses and parted hair, a camera hanging around his neck, and a small notebook in his hand chatted with Rhodes. Rhodes felt it carefully and found no abnormal magic fluctuations, and then cautiously replied, Yes, great. Rapertel was a little excited, to be honest. I had the honor to go to Fairy Tale a few months ago, but I didn't seem to see you at that time. Are you a newcomer? Is this a fan of our guild? Rhodes nodded. She's a new member. She just joined less than two months ago. That's great. That's what I guess. Rapertel said excitedly. Then are you interested in being interviewed by me? If you appear on Soshala, it will be of great help to your reputation. Notorious equals information made public. That was too unsafe and Rhodes planned to reject him politely. I'm sorry, I have no interest in becoming famous. Ah, that's too bad. Raper Tell ruffled his hair uncomfortably. I have been rejected seven times today. If I can't spend the remaining 10,000 J interview fee, I will be scolded by the editor for not working hard enough. Interview fee? Does a magazine as powerful as yours still pay interviewees? This is not the point. The point is, 10,000 J? Luo is short of money recently. Well, I mean, I'm not interested in becoming famous, but I admire you as a reporter who works so hard, so it's not impossible to cooperate with it reluctantly. What's so scary about disclosing information? It's not enough to disclose false information. 10,000 J, I can give you a good return gift. That's great. Thank you very much. Raper Tell was overjoyed. So before the celebration began, a simple interview quietly began. The first is basic information such as name, age, etc. There is nothing to hide in this. After that, it's all about magic. I use summoning magic to summon some strange animals to help me complete my work. Rhodes summoned Worm to show his face, and Raper Telkaka took a few photos. That's so cute. So, what is your approximate level of strength in the guild? It's hard to compare with the veteran members, but among the newcomers, they are definitely the strongest. No other newcomers have joined in recent months, so there is nothing wrong with Luo being the strongest newcomer. That's so cool. The strongest newcomer from the strongest guild. Great news headline. The editor will like it. Raptor continued to ask. The summoned beast just looked cute. So what is your strongest magic? Then I have to mention the strongest summoned beast I surrendered just last month. The Canyon Swift Crab. In an extremely dangerous canyon. There is a bottomless river. Where people live. Rhodes described the place where the river crab lived in an exaggerated manner. Saying that it was a powerful monster he got last month which was far stronger than all the summoned beasts he had in the past. Not a single lie. The interview ended with rapper Tell requesting a look at the mighty river crab. Rhodes followed him to the hotel courtyard to show it off. Fortunately, river crabs are big enough and ugly enough. The huge claws, long tentacles and spike-like protrusions on the shell are very intimidating. Raper Tell took a few close-ups of the crab claws, and Rhodes earned 10,000 J, good man. The interviewer and the interviewee expressed the same sigh. The celebration started with the dance of 15 beauties. The dynamic music and hot dance moves quickly heated up the atmosphere of the entire venue. Raper Tell actually wanted to go back and sort out the manuscript, but it was hard to miss such a major celebration, 
so he stayed to entertain Rhodes. But as soon as the show came out, he no longer cared about Rhodes. While marveling, he picked up the camera and took pictures. Rhodes was a little worried about whether his film would be enough. By the way, do the cameras here use film or magic crystal? Putting aside his doubts, Rhodes ate and watched. The main thing was eating. He needed to replenish his energy after running around for a day. While working hard, he also took time to applaud the crowd. After the opening dance, there was a speech by the president, which was nothing more than a speech of celebration, encouragement, and thanks. Chapter 58, Part 2 If you don't know someone and don't want to hear anything, Rhodes cooks quietly. Until he finished speaking, the lights on the stage changed, shining on the center position, and Mira appeared. Rhodes put down the tableware and wiped his mouth. He was actually not particularly anxious about cooking. You can read more daily new novels on FictionZone.net. Both sites share the same login details so you don't need to sign up again. Chapter 59, Part 1 Mira wore a yellow long dress with beige laces and bows. It was simple, elegant, and beautiful. She held a guitar and glanced at the applauding and cheering audience under the stage. When she saw a foodie who had just put down his tableware and waved to her, Mira smiled, greeted the audience, and sat down. She gently lifted her legs from the slit of her skirt, perfectly covering the places that shouldn't be exposed, and then gently brushed her fingers over the guitar strings. A little bird flew over, its head turned into a microphone, and hovered in front of Mira. The prelude sounded, Mira entered the state, and the hall became quiet, and everyone listened to the music on the stage attentively. Finally, she opened her mouth and sang a gentle healing song with a clear and beautiful voice. Mira sang so passionately that her expression and tone changed with the lyrics and the emotional changes of the song. Sing the emotions in your heart into the hearts of everyone present. There were actually many excellent singers present, but even they couldn't help but sincerely applaud Mira at the end. I just want to flap my wings more powerfully and fly high. I believe in you so much, from now on. We will weave our beautiful memories together. The last few lyrics were devastating to Rod. Just thinking about it rationally, the lyrics of the entire song are more written for all the guild members. The most touching thing should be the first two sentences. Because I still have my destination. Because I still have people waiting for me. The guild is everyone's destination. And there are people in the guild waiting for everyone to return. Fairy tale is such a place. After singing the song, Mira bowed and left the backstage, walking around to the banquet hall to find Rhodes. How about it? I've only just learned guitar. Isn't it a bit embarrassing? Of course not. It sounds great. The playing is very good, and the singing is very touching. Rhodes said, There were a few reporters just now who were so moved that they almost cried. It's not that exaggerated. It's not an exaggeration at all. Rode took an empty plate, took some food and put it in front of her. Are you hungry? I've tried these and they taste good. Not only does it taste good, but it also doesn't have a lot of soup, syrup, fish bones and other things that don't taste very good. Rhodes selected carefully, not only to take care of her taste, but also to take care of her image on this occasion. Thanks. Mira, who often takes care of others, can best understand the feeling of being taken care of. It's delicious. Mira narrowed her eyes slightly. Rhodes was completely trustworthy when it came to recommending delicious food. Rhodes chose some food that he had not tried yet and asked casually, Are there any other plans for the future? Just say hello to the familiar editor again, Mira said, but it's better to wait until the celebration is over before leaving. And, and, Mira blinked. And there's also Ginny's finale performance, aren't you looking forward to it? I don't have any special expectations, but for Mr. Shapiki's sake, I should respect her efforts. Otherwise, otherwise, if she asks her in the future which outfit of hers is the most eye-catching today, I will say it is a long yellow skirt. Rhodes looked at Mira and said, I feel like I will be killed by her. Mira looked at her outfit, laughed, and said a little bit harshly, Why don't you just answer like this, demon? But it felt very interesting, and Rhodes also smiled a little evilly. That's okay. Two demons appeared on the field, and Jenny in the background shivered. The celebration lasted until around 10 o'clock in the evening. In fact, the real process of various programs, leadership speeches, and some employee interactions ended before 9 o'clock. The rest of the time is spent socializing, drinking, and making noise. Of course, when it comes to noise, it is far worse than in the guild. Rhodes accompanied Mira through the necessary procedures and then returned to the room to prepare for a rest. Mira had a few drinks in the evening and her face turned slightly red, but unfortunately she was not drunk. No, luckily I wasn't drunk. Because of this, there are no welcome benefits at night. 
It just unlocked Myra's pajamas panel after she got out of the bath, so it's not worth mentioning. Early the next morning, the two of them packed up and went out together to hire a carriage, which had a carriage that could protect them from both the sun and the rain. Rhodes confirmed that the driver was an ordinary person, and the two horses pulling the cart looked healthy and had no problems. Mira was almost used to his style and waited quietly for him to finish the inspection before paying and getting in the car. It was a pity that until the two of them left the royal capital, they never met Jenny again, and the prank plan came to nothing. The only disadvantage of taking the land route is that the canyon swift crabs are too conspicuous. Although he said this, Rhodes still sent two river crabs, one behind the other, to investigate the situation. Because if we go back by boat, we are going against the current, and today's weather is not suitable for sailing. Mira ignored the swift crab's question and only answered the reason for riding the carriage. In addition, trivial matters such as how to rent a carriage are actually small experiences that Rhodes needs to accumulate. By the way, this is for you. Rhodes took out a paper bag from his backpack. Mira wanted to say that she had an exploding magic crystal in her handbag, so there was no need to get anything else. But when I opened the paper bag, I found that it was not the magic book I imagined, but a small black satchel. Ah, is this the envelope package from the store yesterday? Mira was a little surprised. When was it? When I went out for morning exercise in the morning, I passed by that store. Passing by on purpose is also passing by. Rhodes said, it's a return gift, I guess, but I don't quite understand your preferences. He really didn't know much about it. He just remembered that when Mira and Jenny competed yesterday, this bag appeared in Myra's outfit twice. Jenny might have been so angry that she didn't pay attention, otherwise she could have used this as a reason to ask for a points deduction. Thank you. I like it very much. No wonder. I said I was going out for morning exercise this morning, but I didn't sweat at all when I came back. Mira hugged the bag and the paper bag together and her eyes curled up. That's great if you like it. Rhodes breathed a sigh of relief. His reasoning was correct. This gift was not delivered wrongly after all. Rhodes was about to continue saying something, but suddenly he was startled and shouted to the front. Stop, stop. The driver held the reins firmly, the two horses neighed slightly, and the carriage slowed down and stopped quickly. Mira, who was sitting sideways, tilted due to inertia, but quickly stabilized herself. She asked, What's wrong? Rhodes said, someone is blocking the road ahead. Mira opened the curtain hanging on the car window, stuck her head out and looked out, only to see a relatively flat but slightly curved dirt road. Looking forward, I could only see a slope of dirt, but no one was there. She wondered, where? Rhodes said, one kilometer away, two people, one holding a wand and the other holding a flute, should both be magicians, one kilometer away. Chapter 59, Part 2 Mira thought of the Canyon Swift crabs sent by Rhodes, such reliable reconnaissance. Chapter 60, Part 1 Rod and Mira claimed that they wanted to take a break and get some fresh air, and asked Mr. Driver to wait for a while. The request was not too much, so the driver did not refuse and cooperatingly drove the horse to a shady place to rest, and Rhodes pulled Mira a little further. From the driver's angle, only Rhodes' back could be seen, while Myra's figure was blocked. The driver lit a cigarette and shook his head slightly young people today. In fact, the two people were just discussing things. I have seen the vision of the swift crab behind. There are currently no other carriages and horses on this road, so their target is most likely us. Mira frowned. But why? Can you confirm their identities? For those of you who don't know, the person holding the staff has the coat of arms of ghost on the back of his neck. Rhodes raised his eyebrows. The swift crab was discovered. They were a little wary, but ignored it and let it pass by. Ghost is the ruler of ghosts? Mira knew that ghost and fairy tale had some old grudges, and there would occasionally be some minor friction when the magicians from the two guilds met. Rhodes nodded. Well, it is the strongest guild in Fiori along with our fairy tale. He remembered the information about President Ghost and several aces, but these two were obviously not among those people. Rhodes thought for a while. I now have three plans to help me give advice. There are people in our guild who, when encountering a problem, don't just rush forward, but instead propose a plan first, and there are three of them. The president will definitely be very pleased. Just in case, Mira asked, among the three options, shouldn't it include rushing over and throwing the explosive magic crystal? How can I be so cruel? If I see a magician standing in the middle of the road, I will blow them up or something. The dark guild wouldn't do this, right? Jenny might have something to say. The first plan is the easiest one. Now that we know their location, we can just go around them, Rhodes said, 
this can directly avoid possible conflicts without any danger. The disadvantage is that it is impossible to understand their purpose. If you avoid this time, there may be another time, Mira nodded. And if they are not targeting us, but targeting the guild, then other companions may also be in danger in the future. The second option is to keep going, and when they start to attack, we will immediately fight back. When the time comes, they are the ones who provoke the conflict, and they will be punished by the council. But we don't know what their magic is and what their strength is. We may overturn, and it may also affect Mr. Driver. I don't recommend this. If Urza or Natsu were here, they would probably choose this, just be reasonable and fight first. Mira felt that she and Rhodes were really not suitable for being so impulsive, because they brought too many explosive magic crystals and could easily kill someone. Then the last one must be the safest one? Rhodes nodded. Well, the third option is that we rest here first, and I let hundreds of wild monsters go over to see if I can calm them down. Then they would be tortured to see what their purpose was. If we can't settle it, it won't delay us to take a detour and go back to ask the president to deal with them. As long as they weren't the ghost's signatures, the president would definitely not need to take action to deal with them. Mira felt that Rhodes could handle it by himself, so she nodded. Then I will leave it all to Mr. Guard. Do you need my cooperation? Miss Mira Jane, please have a good rest. I brought some snacks and entertained Mr. Driver for a while. Please take your time, Mira smiled and said. Yes, Mr. Rhodes. Rhodes immediately took action, first moving the river crab from behind and letting it go to the front. Before fighting, open your vision first to prevent being caught. This is called anti-gank awareness. Then he summoned two groups of stone beetles and told them to escape and crawl through the ground. Then two more groups of shadow wolves will be added, allowing them to use their special skills to sneak between street trees and shrubs in the field. Finally, add a group of sharp-beaked birds and let them spread out and fly at low altitude, ready for air strikes at any time. As for the last group of sharp-beaked birds and two magic swamp frogs, Rhodes had to save some magic power to use as a reserve force, and he couldn't drain himself dry before the war started. Mira watched the wild monsters leave in groups, wondering whether the enemies were two or twenty. Behind the small slope, one kilometer away, the wizard holding the flute asked, Star, we have been waiting for an hour. When will they come? The magician holding the staff said, Be patient, Faro. Starting from Huadu, you will definitely pass by Fairy Tale. No matter how slow you are, you can still arrive before noon. Oh, Farak pressed the holes on the flute boredly and suddenly said, Have you ever seen that big crab just now? It's strange that it's running around on land, so far away from the water. What kind of crab is it? Who knows, it may be a common animal nearby. Star pointed with the top of his staff. That's not another one. Faru licked his lips and pretended to put the flute to his mouth. Catch one and taste it. In order to stop them in advance, we haven't had breakfast yet. Don't do unnecessary things, Star said. As long as we can make Fairy Tail look embarrassed, we will have a chance to be transferred to the headquarters. Then, you can meet Gajil San, the powerful Gajil San. At the mention of that name, Star's eyes were filled with admiration, and Farah's face also showed yearning. Hey, why doesn't that crab leave? Could it be that they regard us as food? The size and appearance of the river crab were quite intimidating. So much so that the two magicians became nervous and picked up their weapons to point at the river crab. At this moment, the ground beneath the two men shook, and two ancient stone beetles burst out of the ground, using their pliers like mouthparts to clamp the waist of the two men. Whoa, monster, what is this? In panic, one of them raised his staff and the other played his flute. At this time, two more stone beetles emerged from the ground, attacking their staffs and flutes. Just a light bomb flew out of the pentagram on the top of the staff, and a sonic bomb flew out of the hole in the tail of the flute, hitting a stone beetle each. The two stone beetles landed, split into four mini stone beetles, and continued to charge according to Rhodes' order. What kind of monster is this? The two of them were already a little panicked at this time, and a full blow at the critical moment actually increased the number of enemies. Without understanding the information, the more monsters you fight, the more you fight, which will naturally make your scalp numb. But they have no choice but to continue to attack. But six shadow wolves jumped out from the bushes on the roadside. For ordinary wolves bit their wrists respectively, causing their weapons to fly away. Two two-headed wolves stood in front of them, their four mouths roaring into their four ears respectively. The four mini stone beetles continued to perform the task of Expelliarmus rigidly, rushing towards the two weapons that flew out. Sixteen stone pestle-like insect legs stomped down breaking the staff and crushing the flute. 
Chapter 60, Part 2 He was bitten and unable to struggle. His weapon was completely trampled to pieces. The ferocious wolf roared in his ears. His nose could smell the fishy smell of the wolf's mouth, and his cheeks could feel the wolf's saliva splashing on his face. Dead. Star fell into despair and gave up the struggle completely. Faru simply rolled his eyes and fainted. A total of six red-haired strange birds, one large and five small, flew over at low altitude and landed on the ground not far away. The owner's order was to carry out airstrikes when the opponent's resistance was fierce, but now they had nothing to do. Rhodes, who was observing the battlefield through the river crab, showed an expression of disbelief. Thanks to me being so well prepared, they ended up, that's it. You can read more daily new novels on fictionzone.net. Both sites share the same login details so you don't need to sign up again. Chapter 61, Part 1 Regarding these two ghost wizards, Rhodes commented, She has a better sense of combat than Jenny. At least she can immediately attack and try to escape after being bitten by an ancient stone beetle. In addition, it is not safe to only hold magic. Once something goes wrong with the props, it is simply too powerless. You have to make two preparations when you go back. First, you need to get a stronger chain so that you don't need to take it off even if you sleep. Secondly, you need to find the right ability magic quickly. As a summoner, you must at least have the combat power to tear apart a giant dragon with your hands. What's wrong, Rod? Mira noticed Rod's expression changing and asked, He looks very ugly. Is the plan not going well? No, it was too smooth, even a little unbelievable. Isn't that great? Rhodes is indeed very strong. Mira did not forget that the purpose of the president letting Rhodes come out was to help him increase his self-confidence. To some extent, maybe we should thank those two unlucky guys? Asked, how to keep the corners of the mouth suppressed and remain cool when being praised by a girl for being very strong. Anyway, Rhodes didn't hold back. Fortunately, he was just happy for a moment and didn't get carried away or forget about business. Sneak attacks don't count. The two of them have some problems themselves. Are those two going to be taken back to the guild and handed over to Lucky for torture? Lachi just likes to collect torture instruments and has no interest in using them. Mira tried to correct Rhodes' thoughts. Don't have a strange impression on her. Oh, for the sake of Myra's serious emphasis, I believed it 98% first. Then let's ask, but I'm worried that they won't tell the truth, or will it be handed over to Warren? Warren can only read relatively strong voices, but cannot completely read other people's thoughts. Mira said, and recently, you know Warren's situation? That's right. The storm of the last incident hasn't completely passed yet. Actually, there is a simpler way. Mira thought for a while and used transformation magic. Just ask them. Rhodes looked at the man Mira had turned into. This is one of Ghost's ace magicians, Gajil? Mira said. I have seen his picture in a magazine. It should not be discovered in a short time. Rhodes was very happy to see Myra's intelligence and flexibility. His only concern was, but it's not safe for you to face dangerous people. Myra's eyes seemed a little helpless. This matter is related to the conflict between the two guilds, and it is also related to whether everyone's future missions will go smoothly. The sooner we can figure it out, the better. Once the matter concerns your companions, you have to do it. Rhodes could only nod. Then, let me prepare. Ten minutes later, Gajil and one of his masked followers appeared in front of Star and Faru. At this time, Star and Faru's entire bodies were buried in the soil, leaving only their heads on the ground. The wild monsters responsible for guarding them ran away in fear after seeing Gajil. Gajil turned back and gave his little follower Rhodes a look, as if to ask, Is this what you said about getting ready? The little attendant's smile was blocked by the mask, so he had to shrug lightly, all for safety. Gia, Mr. Gajil. Star suspected that he was dreaming. He was saved by his idol when his life was about to end. The little follower took a step forward very sensibly and asked a little arrogantly, Do you know Mr. Gajil? Are you from Spectre? In a guild like Spectre, which is very large and even has branches, the members do not know each other. Understanding is also normal. Star quickly said, We are from the Kektos branch, Mr. Gajil. Please save us. The little follower was still asking questions for Gajil. Why are the people from the Kektos branch in a place like this? Star had no doubts about the identity of the masked follower, and even envied him for being able to question Mr. Gajil. Because we have a commission that needs to be handled in Huadu, and we happen to see someone from Fairy Tale show off in the commercial street yesterday, that kind of guild that plays house can actually be on par with us ghosts. So, 
We are waiting here in advance today to teach them a lesson and make them look foolish. Star angrily criticized Fairy Tail for its nonsense and stupidity and praised the ghost for its power and regularity. Gajil looked at the little follower. Were these two people present at yesterday's match with Jenny? And you go to such great lengths, risk creating friction, resisting with force, and risking being held accountable by the council to ambush them. Is the purpose just that simple? The little follower frowned and said, You want to teach them a lesson, just for such boring things? Star was startled. How could it be said that those who taught fairy tale a lesson were bored? Going against fairy tale was something that ghosts would do whenever they had the chance. Because he highly respected Ghost, Star had learned from the information before joining the guild that one of the important reasons why Ghost was established was to compete with Fairy Tail. A person who is a ghost actually calls this kind of thing boring. There is something wrong with this masked man. He, he doesn't deserve to be around Mr. Gajil at all. That position should be mine. The little follower thought he had said something wrong and was suspected by the other party and was about to make up for it. Unexpectedly, Star shouted angrily. How did someone like you get into this headquarters? Mr. Gajil, he doesn't deserve to be by your side. Let me follow you. Ah, this is confirmed. This person's purpose should be that simple. Gajil finally spoke. If he is not worthy, are you worthy enough to ambush Fairy Tail and end up in such a mess? I, Mr. Gajil. Star opened his mouth dryly. He didn't even see Fairy Tail's people. Gajil made a precise hit. Huh? With that expression, doesn't it mean that Fairy Tail didn't do a good thing and you were just attacked by a group of ordinary beasts? Star's face turned red. How could it be an ordinary beast? It was definitely not an ordinary beast. But as soon as Mr. Gajil came, the beast was scared away. Could it be that the two of them were really too weak? Stop embarrassing yourself here. Star was reprimanded to shame. Gajil walked up to him and squatted down, placing his fingers slightly apart on his temples, and Star immediately fell asleep. Sleep magic, one of the small magics that Mira mastered, is far less powerful than Mist Gang. It is usually used for self-defense. Pharaoh, who was sleeping next to him, was also click like this. Under the influence of someone, it is better to be safe. Gajil stood up, and in a flash of light and shadow, she returned to Myra's appearance. She silently voiced her voice with one hand. It's too tiring to speak in a rough voice. Mira raised her head and found Rhodes staring at her. What's wrong? Is there something wrong? No. I'll wash my eyes and get Gajil's face out of my mind. Mira smiled slyly, and her head turned into Gajil's look again. Is it this face? Chapter 61, Part 2 Puff Chapter 62, Part 1 The two magicians, Ghost, are much simpler than Rhodes imagined. They were really unhappy with Fairy Tales people, so they wanted to teach them a lesson, and because they didn't want to cause trouble in the capital, they went to the wilderness to block the road. Maybe there is still a little desire to stand out in their guild, or to make meritorious deeds. But this does not affect their simple motives, simple plans, and simple lying down. Rhodes was not sure what the guild's attitude was towards this kind of thing, so he had to seek Myra's opinion on how to deal with these two people. Mira thought for a while. The best thing to do about this kind of thing is complain to the council. After all, it's just a conflict between a few of us, and it hasn't risen to the level of a direct war between the guilds. And even if you complain to the council, you may be bitten by the other party, plus the council's attitude towards our guild. Rhodes understood what she meant. Such a trivial matter could only be attributed to children fighting. The fact that Jin Shangzuna went online alarmed the council, and they might be slapped with 50 blows from each side, and the presidents of both sides would be punished with a letter of apology. Since Fairy Tail is more capable of causing trouble, his own president may be scolded even more severely. So the best thing to do is to pretend nothing happened, and we just picked up two people on the road who were attacked by wild beasts. Mira nodded. That's pretty much it. If you're not angry anymore, the most you can do is beat them up. Rhodes looked at the two people. There were marks on his waist from being pinched by the stone beetle's mouthparts and wounds on his arms from being bitten by a shadow wolf. I don't know if there were any fractures. Because it was forcibly dragged underground and dug out by stone beetles, it was covered in dust and looked quite miserable. Forget it. What's the point of unilaterally beating someone who has no ability to resist? Rhodes said. How long will it take for them to wake up? Mira said. If no one comes to disturb them, the magic will be lifted in less than half an hour. When they wake up depends on their usual sleep quality. Then let them sleep well here. Rhodes said. How about we go back and ask the driver to go around here? There were no ferocious beasts near the road. 
and Rhodes hoped they would encounter passing thieves and robbers. How bad? Mira smiled, I agree. She also had no extra sympathy for these two people who wanted to teach her a lesson. Welcome back, Mira. It was already evening when we returned to the guild, and it was a lively time in the guild. Mira received a warm welcome as soon as she entered the guild, while Rhodes received a warm cross-examination. The leaders are naturally Wakaba and Macau. You're so cunning, you actually went to Huadu with Mira alone. Damn it, I'm so envious. It's a mission, an escort mission. I also want to take on such a mission. Hey, you didn't take the opportunity to do anything to Mira, right? For example, at night. Of course not. The suite we live in has separate rooms. Asterisk, asterisk, Cole. It's actually a suite. Let's duel. Rhodes thought that a duel wouldn't be impossible. Those two guys he met on the road were so good. It would be nice to practice with everyone. Elfman, please come over and say a few words. I just heard from my sister that Rhodes did a good job in guarding. Elfman clenched his fist and bent his arm. He is indeed a man. Elfman has rebelled. What did you say? How can the word rebellion be applied to a man? Originally, they were chasing after Rhodes to ask about Mira, but in the end, they got into a fight as soon as the topic changed and instead left Rhodes alone. It's a small scene. I'm used to it. Road, can you come here? The president, who was sitting cross-legged on the counter, waved to Rhodes. Mira stood aside, as if she was about to get into work right after she came back. President? Yeah. The president nodded. How do you feel about the mission? Rhodes thought for a while. Overall, I'm quite happy. The president showed a happy smile. It was great that the children who stayed at home every day finally felt the fun of going out. But Rhodes' attitude changed. But it's also quite dangerous. You can be stared at by people just walking around the street. It's very troublesome. The president's smile disappeared. The annoying ghosts came to cause trouble at this time. So let's just fight with them. Makarov was also a powder keg when he was young. But he has tempered his temper as he got older. In addition, I have to take care of so many children, and I have a lot more worries about doing things. If Mira and Rhodes came back injured today, Makarov would definitely come to the door with the entire guild without a second thought. But the two were safe. Makarov felt that the matter was not that serious. Moreover, according to Myra's account, the two guys who wanted to make trouble suffered a lot, and in the end they didn't even know who they were beaten by. Rhodes did a good job, but his style of doing things is a bit, but as long as it's to protect yourself and your companions, then there's no problem. Being willing to protect your companions is the biggest plus point in fairy tale. Makarov admired Rhodes more and more. By the way, Rhodes, Mira suddenly remembered something. Give me the power of attorney. Next is the final process of the task. Oh. Rhodes put the backpack on the counter, opened it, and took out magic books and crystal balls from it. Makarov's face is getting darker and darker. Do I really appreciate this kid? Oh, President. I have never used these. I will send them back to the warehouse later. As long as this kind of prop is not consumed, you don't need to pay for it which is a small benefit for guild members. But Makarov is now starting to consider whether to charge some rental fees to help Rhodes correct his bad habits. Here, Rhodes took out the power of attorney, handed it out, and immediately took it back. He asked, should it be handed over to the client now, or to the president's assistant? Mira laughed. Now the client, Mira Jane, signs to confirm that Mr. Rhodes' mission has been completed, and also pays for the mission, Lucky and the other two little sisters looked at Rod and Mira completing the finishing process of the task like playing house, showing their Ani smiles. Hee hee, how come we have such a tacit understanding after going out once and coming back? We need to torture sister Mira later, hee hee. Mira took out the banknotes from her wallet and handed them to Rhodes. She also took out the task record book and wrote down the task completion time. Rhodes felt a little hot while holding the two big bills. Can this really be considered a mission, president? Why not? Makarov asked with a smile, Mira, is there any violation in Rhodes' mission? No, guild leader. Mira showed the order form and record book. I personally confirmed all the procedures, and they absolutely comply with the rules of the guild. Then there's no problem, rest assured. Makarov jumped off the counter and left slowly. He was going to investigate the ghost thing. Yes. Rhodes felt their kindness, thank you, but it's not good to just accept the money like this. Rhodes thought for a while and asked Mira, how about I treat you to something to eat in a few days? Chapter 62, Part 2 Mira seemed to understand Rhodes' concerns and nodded. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, Lucky and the others cast admiring glances at Rhodes. Why could this man invite sister Mira out for dinner so naturally? And it was so easy to succeed. Yeah.
Chapter 63, Part 1 Mira randomly found some excuse and drove away the noisy Lucky and others. He asked Rhodes in a low voice, If we want to treat guests, what about the rent? She has not forgotten the reason why Rhodes wanted to take on the mission. Rhodes grimaced, Let's take on another mission in the next two days. Please help me keep an eye on it. I'll also ask if anyone wants to form a team. Mira smiled and said, Okay, Rhodes is always moving forward, so the president doesn't need to worry too much. It was still early before the guild closed. So Rhodes went to the backyard to do some iron training and boxing. He couldn't move his muscles happily in the past two days, so he felt uncomfortable. After exercising for a while, he stopped, borrowed the guild's bathroom to take a shower, and returned to the tavern to chat with Marcus and the others. There are enough manpower today. Rhodes only needs to help occasionally. With Rhodes around, the conversation naturally turned to him and Mira going out alone. But Rhodes' main purpose was to remind everyone to be more careful when going out to work, so he tried very hard to bring the topic to the ghost. A ghost's people actually do such a thing. Arzak was a little angry, but then he was a little envious. But during the team formation process, you perfectly protected the people you wanted to protect. Isn't it cool? He wanted to invite Biska to form a team together, and then protect Biska well. In that case, Rhodes looked at Alzac's expression and secretly reflected on whether he had ever shown such a stupid expression. The ghosts are really annoying. Nabu condemned the ghosts and comforted him, but this kind of thing should be regarded as an accident. The chance of magicians from different guilds meeting is not high. Rhodes glanced at the speaker and said after careful consideration, Nabu, it's hard for me to believe what you said. Nabu was stunned. Ah? Marcus laughed loudly. That's right, Nabu. You have to complete at least one or two tasks to be qualified to say such things. Rode, this is for you. Lita suddenly handed Rhodes a piece of paper. Rhodes took it, and what was painted on it was the scene when he and Mira went out together. At that time, he smiled and waved at the backs of the two people. Everyone was noisy in the tavern. Lucky and other people gathered together and covered their mouths and laughed, while a few people looked at the door in surprise or envy. Rhodes and Mira stepped out of the guild door with one foot, turned their heads and looked at each other, saying something. The smiles on their faces were as bright as the sunshine that morning. Lita said, Because I thought the scene was beautiful, I drew it as a souvenir of your first time going out to work. The painting is so good, Lita's. Rhodes was full of surprise. I will store it well. Lita's was also very happy. Rhodes's expression when he saw the painting was the best compliment to him. Nabu is still arguing with Marcus that he is not not going to work, but looking for work that only he can complete. But when I saw such a good painting, I immediately stopped arguing. Lita's, I go in and out every day. Why are there no paintings of mine? Lita's held up the brim of his hat and said calmly, If you decide to go out to work, I can draw you as many pictures as you want. He picked up the cloth and slapped the table. That's so disrespectful. I'm going to look at the bulletin board now. Rhodes couldn't help but remind him, Don't be impulsive. Think carefully before choosing. Lita's said, Don't be nervous. I bet Nabu will be back in 10 minutes. Marcus smiled and said, No, there are a lot of tasks on the bulletin board today. Maybe 20 minutes? Famous scene in fairy tale. Nabu is looking at the bulletin board. Scenarios that fairy tale doesn't exist in. Taking the cloth to work. Rhodes still doesn't understand what kind of psychological problem Nabu has, even though he is obviously very strong. His enchantment magic, the spirit of the bear, can give Nabu the power of a bear, and his punch is always very exciting. If Rhodes wanted to defeat him, he would have to be surrounded by several wild monsters. Although it only lasted less than two days, everything I saw after returning from a long trip felt familiar. Not only in the guild, but also at home. Familiar tables and chairs, familiar beds, familiar sandbags. Seeing the sandbag, Rhodes threw another set of punches. Exercise and meditation cannot be given up, nor can exploration of Summoner's Rift. According to the previous progress, there should be a red or blue one in a few days, not far from the dragon. Early the next morning, Rhodes went to work in the guild as usual. After finishing a bunch of trivial matters, I want to look in front of the bulletin board. The highest rewards are usually those for defeating giant monsters, capturing dangerous criminals, etc. There are many tasks with rewards as high as 1 million. It's just that the difficulty of these tasks is close to S level. Even if Rhodes dares to take them, Mira will reject them. Those with low pay are a bit more complicated, and most of them are tasks in Magnolia and nearby villages and towns. What about irrigating fields, collecting rare flowers and plants, catching idiots, finding lost things? It can be as big as related to the livelihood of a village or town. 
as small as it can solve the troubles of adolescence for young girls. Rhodes looked at them one by one and found that either they were not in his area of expertise or the remuneration was not enough to compensate for lost work time. It's not just him. Many people have this trouble when looking for tasks that suit them. When he was fascinated by the scene, a hand with a ring stretched out and tore off a piece of paper with the task of catching the idiot. Rhodes turned his head and saw a handsome guy. Loki? Huh. Are you okay? Before he could finish saying hello, Loki had already retreated five meters away. Rhodes was not happy, and the experience of being hidden as a dirty thing was not good at all. I said you should know by now that my magic is different from the magic of the stars. Um, ah, uh, sorry, I'm used to it. Loki held the task list and walked towards the counter stiffly. Would you like to form a team? I have someone who is good at searching. Swish. Loki suddenly appeared in front of Mira as if the fast forward button was pressed. Single person mission. Arrest the suspicious person who is following and harassing the client. Mira looked at the task list and just nodded. Loki had already rushed out of the guild like the wind. Rhodes. Okay. It's not that easy to untie the knot in my heart, even though I don't know what the knot is. Rhodes decided to go to the backyard to practice magic for a while and wait to see if there would be any new commissions today. Oh, let Worm go to the kitchen to eat and drink first. In the afternoon, the guild was still noisy. Natsu had just shown off a special flame set meal and was leaning on the table with satisfaction. Gray is not here today. He feels awkward and wants to punch him in the face. Happy also cooked two grilled fish and spread his bulging belly on the table. Natsu, we don't seem to have much money. Uh. Natsu opened his wallet and poured it on the table. Several coins clattered down, along with two fluttering banknotes. The total amount is less than 10,000 J, which is probably enough to feed him and Happy for two or three days. Chapter 63, Part 2 No way. Go to work. Natsu stood up and punched the palm of his left hand with his right fist. Look for a fun task. Happy raised his cat's paw. Love. Chapter 63, Part 1 Mira randomly found some excuse and drove away the noisy Lucky and others. He asked Rhodes in a low voice, If we want to treat guests, what about the rent? She has not forgotten the reason why Rhodes wanted to take on the mission. Rhodes grimaced, Let's take on another mission in the next two days. Please help me keep an eye on it. I'll also ask if anyone wants to form a team. Mira smiled and said, Okay, Rhodes is always moving forward, so the president doesn't need to worry too much. It was still early before the guild closed. So Rhodes went to the backyard to do some iron training and boxing. He couldn't move his muscles happily in the past two days, so he felt uncomfortable. After exercising for a while, he stopped, borrowed the guild's bathroom to take a shower, and returned to the tavern to chat with Marcus and the others. There are enough manpower today. Rhodes only needs to help occasionally. With Rhodes around, the conversation naturally turned to him and Mira going out alone. But Rhodes' main purpose was to remind everyone to be more careful when going out to work so he tried very hard to bring the topic to the ghost. A ghost's people actually do such a thing. Arzak was a little angry, but then he was a little envious. But during the team formation process, you perfectly protected the people you wanted to protect. Isn't it cool? He wanted to invite Biska to form a team together, and then protect Biska well. In that case, Rhodes looked at Alzac's expression and secretly reflected on whether he had ever shown such a stupid expression. The ghosts are really annoying. Nabu condemned the ghosts and comforted him, but this kind of thing should be regarded as an accident. The chance of magicians from different guilds meeting is not high. Rhodes glanced at the speaker and said after careful consideration, Nabu, it's hard for me to believe what you said. Nabu was stunned. Ah? Marcus laughed loudly. That's right, Nabu, you have to complete at least one or two tasks to be qualified to say such things. Rode, this is for you. Lita suddenly handed Rhodes a piece of paper. Rhodes took it, and what was painted on it was the scene when he and Mira went out together. At that time, he smiled and waved at the backs of the two people. Everyone was noisy in the tavern. Lucky and other people gathered together and covered their mouths and laughed, while a few people looked at the door in surprise or envy. Rhodes and Mira stepped out of the guild door with one foot, turned their heads and looked at each other, saying something. The smiles on their faces were as bright as the sunshine that morning. Lita said, Because I thought the scene was beautiful. I drew it as a souvenir of your first time going out to work. The painting is so good, Lita's. Rhodes was full of surprise. I will store it well. Lita's was also very happy. Rhodes's expression when he saw the painting was the best compliment to him. Nabu is still arguing with Marcus that he is not not going to work, 
but looking for work that only he can complete. But when I saw such a good painting, I immediately stopped arguing. Litas, I go in and out every day. Why are there no paintings of mine? Litas held up the brim of his hat and said calmly, If you decide to go out to work, I can draw you as many pictures as you want. He picked up the cloth and slapped the table. That's so disrespectful. I'm going to look at the bulletin board now. Rhodes couldn't help but remind him. Don't be impulsive. Think carefully before choosing. Lita said, Don't be nervous. I bet Nabu will be back in 10 minutes. Marcus smiled and said, No, there are a lot of tasks on the bulletin board today. Maybe 20 minutes? Famous scene in fairy tale. Nabu is looking at the bulletin board. Scenarios that fairy tale doesn't exist in. Taking the cloth to work. Rhodes still doesn't understand what kind of psychological problem Nabu has, even though he is obviously very strong. His enchantment magic, the spirit of the bear, can give Nabu the power of a bear, and his punch is always very exciting. If Rhodes wanted to defeat him, he would have to be surrounded by several wild monsters. Although it only lasted less than two days, everything I saw after returning from a long trip felt familiar. Not only in the guild, but also at home. Familiar tables and chairs, familiar beds, familiar sandbags. Seeing the sandbag, Rhodes threw another set of punches. Exercise and meditation cannot be given up nor can exploration of Summoner's Rift. According to the previous progress, there should be a red or blue one in a few days, not far from the dragon. Early the next morning, Rhodes went to work in the guild as usual. After finishing a bunch of trivial matters, I want to look in front of the bulletin board. The highest rewards are usually those for defeating giant monsters, capturing dangerous criminals, etc. There are many tasks with rewards as high as 1 million. It's just that the difficulty of these tasks is close to S level. Even if Rhodes dares to take them, Mira will reject them. Those with low pay are a bit more complicated, and most of them are tasks in Magnolia and nearby villages and towns. What about irrigating fields, collecting rare flowers and plants, catching idiots, finding lost things? It can be as big as related to the livelihood of a village or town, as small as it can solve the troubles of adolescence for young girls. Rhodes looked at them one by one and found that either they were not in his area of expertise or the remuneration was not enough to compensate for lost work time. It's not just him. Many people have this trouble when looking for tasks that suit them. When he was fascinated by the scene, a hand with a ring stretched out and tore off a piece of paper with the task of catching the idiot. Rhodes turned his head and saw a handsome guy. Loki? Huh. Are you okay? Before he could finish saying hello, Loki had already retreated five meters away. Rhodes was not happy, and the experience of being hidden as a dirty thing was not good at all. I said you should know by now that my magic is different from the magic of the stars. Um, ah, uh, sorry, I'm used to it. Loki held the task list and walked towards the counter stiffly. Would you like to form a team? I have someone who is good at searching. Swish. Loki suddenly appeared in front of Mira as if the fast forward button was pressed. Single person mission. Arrest the suspicious person who is following and harassing the client. Mira looked at the task list and just nodded. Loki had already rushed out of the guild like the wind. Rhodes. Okay, it's not that easy to untie the knot in my heart, even though I don't know what the knot is. Rhodes decided to go to the backyard to practice magic for a while, and wait to see if there would be any new commissions today. Oh, let Worm go to the kitchen to eat and drink first. In the afternoon, the guild was still noisy. Natsu had just shown off a special flame set meal, and was leaning on the table with satisfaction. Gray is not here today. He feels awkward, and wants to punch him in the face. Happy also cooked two grilled fish and spread his bulging belly on the table. Natsu, we don't seem to have much money. Uh. Natsu opened his wallet and poured it on the table. Several coins clattered down, along with two fluttering banknotes. The total amount is less than 10,000 J, which is probably enough to feed him and Happy for two or three days. Chapter 63, Part 2 No Way, Go to Work Chapter 63, Part 2 Natsu stood up and punched the palm of his left hand with his right fist. Look for a fun task. Happy raised his cat's paw. Love. Chapter 65, Part 1 Rhodes chose to take on this task after careful consideration. The first is the remuneration issue. 300,000 J is divided among three people, and each person can get 100,000 J. Happy is a regular mage who bears the crest of fairy tale. He is a companion. He will contribute during the mission, and his share of the money must be counted. This money will allow Rhodes to no longer have to worry about rent, and he will even be able to live relatively comfortably next month. Secondly, there is the issue of safety. 
According to the information provided by Mira, this mission is not very dangerous. Moreover, by forming a team with Natsu, the safety is well guaranteed. It is just a matter of taking care of some wild beasts, so it is not a big problem. Rode seemed to have seen 100000J waving to him, provided that Natsu didn't cause anything else, such as demolishing the village. Pay special attention to this. After the process of accepting the task was completed, the three of them dispersed. Natsu has to go home to pick up his luggage, Happy is going to rent a carriage, and Rhodes also needs to pick up his luggage and make some preparations. Even if you form a team, you can't be careless. Mira watched Rhodes walking towards the warehouse and said helplessly, are you going to borrow something again? Rhodes said with a sneer. Be careful and cautious, and you will gain more if you accumulate more. Mira corrected. It's about being prepared. Oh yes. Mira wanted to say it was wrong and unnecessary, but considering that this was the first time for Rhodes to take on a crusade mission, let him go. A few minutes later, Rhodes returned empty-handed, with a little grievance on his face. What's wrong? The president refused to open the warehouse door. He said it was dangerous enough to take Natsu with him, and if he took the exploding magic crystal, he was afraid the village would disappear. Rhodes felt a little aggrieved. I'm here for self-defense, not for a terrorist attack. Mira couldn't help laughing. Please keep an eye on Natsu and don't let him mess around. Hey. Rhodes waved his hand. I'm leaving. Mira waved. Be careful on the road. When Rhodes walked out of the guild gate, Mira withdrew her gaze. Lucky jumped on Mira from the side lengthening the tone of what Mira just said. On the road, little heart, Mira said angrily. Lachi, what are you doing again? It's not what I'm doing, it's what you're doing, Sister Mira. Lucky lowered her voice and asked, How are you and Rod going? What? Love, love. Lucky made a girlish gesture of holding her heart and said with an intoxicated look on her face, An excellent newcomer to the guild gets along with the guild's signature girl day and night and falls in love because of an escort mission. Then, he practiced hard to protect her and worked hard to take care of her. Then the relationship between the two developed by leaps and bounds, and they entered the palace of marriage. Ah, what a romantic love, Mira said helplessly. Don't talk nonsense, and even the order and cause and effect of things have been disrupted. Beautiful poetry always makes slight adaptations to the rhythm of life. Lucky has her own theory. Speaking of which, Sister Mira, you should have noticed by now. The way Rod looks at you is different from how he looks at others. Mira shook her head slightly. Probably because I was grateful for the little care I gave him before. Lucky denied. That's not true. Levy and I lent things to Rhodes and answered his questions. We also saw the grateful eyes. It's not like that, um, shiny. Stop talking nonsense. There are guests over there who want wine. Go quickly. Yes, yes, Lucky left. Mira lowered her eyes, and even Lucky said the same. During the celebration that day, Jenny said this to Mira backstage. You should know how much impact falling in love has on photo models like us, right? The popularity will drop drastically. Popularity doesn't matter at all. The problem is yourself. Mira is not a little girl who doesn't understand anything. She can feel Rhodes' affection for her. Part of it comes from gratitude. Part of it comes from the affection between companions. And the other part, how is this possible? Rhodes is the best rookie this year. And it should be said in recent years. The president described him as a genius of summoning magic. He was able to maintain a large number of summoned objects in battle at the same time in a short period of time. He is thorough and cautious in doing things, and he perseveres in his daily practice. Even if he encounters setbacks, he just continues to work hard. But what is he like? He is reckless, complacent because he passed the S-Class exam, and takes his younger siblings on adventures self-righteously. In the end, Elfman actually had to fight tooth and nail to take over the Beast King. In the end, even, not even Lee Santa could be protected. He also became this weak. Now I keep smiling every day, not because I have forgotten my sadness, but because I hope Elfman will stop blaming himself, hope that he can get out of his psychological shadow, and hope that his companions will not worry. As long as Elfman can put down his burden and live a good life, it will be enough. As long as her companions don't think of the sad thing when they see her, but can feel a little good, it's enough. As for myself, whether it is pain, sadness, or loss of strength, everything is to blame, and it is the punishment that the arrogant self deserves. Love? Happiness? Even a new family? These things are not something people like me can have. But Rhodes' feelings? Mira, here are two beers. Mira closed her eyes, and when she opened them, her usual smile returned. Come right away. What to do?
What do you want? Rode sat on the carriage and looked at Natsu. He and Happy had been waiting for almost 10 minutes. Happy also complained. It's too slow, Natsu. Wait, wait a minute. I'll be ready soon. I can do it. Natsu took a deep breath, performed a standing long jump, and prepared to jump to the car in one go. However, before taking off, Natsu's movement suddenly stopped. Why don't I walk over there? You. Hey, Happy, what are you doing? Let me go. Happy spread his wings, grabbed Natsu's shoulders, lifted him up and threw him into the carriage, and then shouted, Uncle, you can go. Drive. The driver was actually impatient to wait. It was a long time getting on the bus on such a hot day. Let go, ugh. Natsu stopped struggling, lying in the carriage with a blue face and no strength to speak. Let me go down. Rhodes silently moved away from the direction where Natsu's mouth was facing. Isn't it too exaggerated to get motion sickness like this? Happy said. Love. Natsu has absolutely no idea about transportation. I heard Gray mention it, but I didn't expect it to be so serious. Rhodes poked Natsu's bulging cheek with his hand, and when he heard a woo, he quickly pulled it back. He suddenly felt unsafe again. Isn't this a complete loss of combat ability? Love. You can do anything to Natsu now. Like this, this, this. Happy pulled Natsu's cheek, tied Natsu's hair into a bun, and rolled on his back, tossing around for a while. Happy. Natsu said weakly, stop the car quickly. I won't spare you. Love. Uncle, don't stop the car. Chapter 66, Part 1 It seems that Naz and Happy have a really good relationship. This kind of mutual deception makes Rhodes think of his brothers. He asked, Happy, when did you and Natsu meet? We've known Natsu since we came out of the egg, year X778, so it's been five years. Coming out of the egg? Rod noticed the blind spot. AI, we were hatched from the egg by Natsu. Elfman and Lee Santa also helped. The cat is. Rhodes wanted to say that cats are viviparous animals, but this is a cat from the magical world, and it can talk and fly, so that makes sense. Who is Lee Santa? Happy's ears drooped, and tears filled the corners of his eyes. Lee Santa is Mira and Elfman's sister. When we went to work last year, Rhodes was stunned. Myra's sister? And she was dead? Did Mira have a sister? Mira would not take the initiative to talk about this matter, and other people's feelings about taking care of Mira and Elfman were not willing to be mentioned in the guild. So Rhodes has no way of knowing. Last year, last year, did that girl who faced all her companions with a smile every day, not too long ago, experience such sadness? Behind that smile, I don't know if there is a hidden thought that I don't want to be worried by my companions, and I don't know what kind of strong heart it is. Sorry. Happy. For selfish reasons, Rhodes wanted to continue asking, but Happy's look made it difficult for him to open his mouth. Natsu said that no matter what happens, you must go on strong. If Lee Santa leaves, then take her with you. Happy rubbed his eyes and shook his head vigorously. We? We are also the magicians of fairy tale, and we are also very strong. Happy is very strong. Rhodes touched Happy's head. He was only a five-year-old child. Moreover, Natsu could say such words. It certainly seemed like Natsu could say it. Rhodes looked at Naz. He didn't seem to have any reaction. Could it be that he had lost consciousness? Natsu. Natsu? Woo. There was no fainting, and there was no response, only moans of unknown meaning. Rhodes suggested. How about we stop the car and rest for a while? No. If we don't get to the village before dark, we will have to spend the night in the wild. And even if we stop, it will be like this again if we start again. Happy objected. He had long been accustomed to Natsu being like this. Rather than making him feel uncomfortable a few more times, it would be better to feel it all in one breath. Rhodes asked, Will it be like this when you take him flying? Road is too much. We are not a means of transportation. Ah, sorry, that's not what I meant. Rhodes said, I mean, why not just fly over with Natsu? It's too far and the magic power won't last long. Happy said, What's more important is that it's very tiring and my hands will be sore. Is the main reason because of tiredness? What a good brother. Rhodes thought for a while and called back one of the river crabs responsible for reconnaissance. Would you like to try this? The driver and the horse pulling the cart were well informed and were not frightened by the sudden appearance of the monster. Appeared crab. Happy looked very excited. Natsu couldn't give his opinion. So Happy didn't ask for his opinion and directly carried Natsu and flew onto the back of the river crab. The river crab and the carriage were walking side by side. 
Natsu regained his energy within a few seconds and excitedly stamped his feet on the river crab's back, not afraid of falling at all. Oh, is this for riding? That's great. You don't get dizzy when you're on a river crab, Rhodes asked, sticking his head out of the car window and looking at Nas. Then why do you rent a carriage instead of just renting a horse? Natsu and Happy were stunned, and then they tapped their palms at the same time. That's it. It can still be like this. Rhodes was shocked. Is it because I didn't expect it? In fact, it's not just that, it's also because there are almost no people on the market who provide horse rental services alone. Because it is difficult to deal with the problem of returning the horse after renting it out, and if you can't go back for a while, it will be very uneasy to leave the horse to a layman to take care of it. You don't have to worry so much about a taxi. With the driver following you, everything will be easy. Seeing that both Natsu and Happy looked happy, Rhodes simply let them control the river crab through their tentacles. With Natsu's charge, the river crab instantly became a wild river crab that escaped from the rains. Under Natsu's urging, it even used its own acceleration skills. Ah ha 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 ha. River crabs went back and forth, and the laughter of Natsu and Happy echoed in the wilderness. The driver uncle began to wonder, since there is such magic, why do you rent a car? Is it okay for three people to sit on that big crab? However, a few minutes later, Happy flew back by himself. Rhodes asked, are you tired of playing? Happy lay down on the car seat and stuck out his little tongue. It's so hot, only Natsu is not afraid of the sun. This is the reason for renting a carriage. Natsu ran wildly for a while on the river crab before he came back. Walking side by side with the carriage, he shouted excitedly. Rode, let's always form a team from now on. Rhodes asked, just to have river crabs to ride on? That's right, but you still have to take trains and boats to go further. Natsu smiled heartlessly. Then we won't group together when we go far away. You are so realistic. Rhodes snapped his fingers, and the river crab disappeared. Naz was caught off guard and fell down. He jumped up and shouted towards the carriage. What are you doing? Rod. Oops, the magic power is exhausted. Stick reading. Happy was actually helping Rhodes. Exhausted. Natsu, just run behind the carriage. Great reading. Run away. Natsu chased and shouted angrily. You two bastards. Stop right there. Rhodes and Happy looked at each other and couldn't help laughing. After playing around for a while, Natsu finally got on the river crab, but his face kept looking stinky. Rhodes, this be asterisk 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 D. You have to find a way to find his weaknesses and tease him once. Happy did the same, actually playing pranks with Rod and grabbing his grilled fish next time. Rhodes had a good chat with Happy. Taking advantage of the time on the road, he asked Happy about his wing magic. It was a magic that Happy had mastered since he was born. Rhodes asked how long Happy could fly and how many kilograms of weight he could lift. Teammate intelligence is also important. Happy suddenly asked, Rod, why don't you ask Worm to come out to play? Worm doesn't like the hot weather now, so? Rhodes was stunned. It's broken. I forgot Worm in the guild kitchen. Because he had to cooperate with Mr. Cook in researching Poro delicacies, Rhodes sent Worm to the kitchen in the morning, but he forgot to take it with him when he left the guild. Happy complained. It sucks. Chapter 66, Part 2 It's not a big problem, since Worm will go back on his own anyway, and since he's eating and drinking in the kitchen, he's probably already happy to forget about the abyss. Chapter 67, Part 1 The sun gradually moves westward, becoming larger and larger. Its color begins to change to orange, and its light becomes softer. On a flat road that has no apparent curvature when viewed from a distance, but appears to be twists and turns when viewed from a distance, a two-wheeled carriage is advancing slowly and unhurriedly. There was also a huge crab wandering near the carriage, moving fast and slow, far and near. There are golden wheat fields on the roadside. Because there is no wind today, there is no scene of rolling wheat waves. The man and the cat who poked their heads out of the carriage window were not disappointed, quietly admiring the beautiful countryside. Hey, I saw the mountain. We'll be there soon. The one who broke the silence was the young man with cherry-colored hair on the crab's back, uncle driving the car. Hurry up. Happy complained. Natsu is so noisy. Rhodes nodded. Yeah, I don't understand the sentiment at all. Natsu was immediately annoyed by the way the two of them were singing along, and he bared his teeth on the crab's back. When did you two become so close? Rod said. When you get carsick. Pfft. Happy suppressed a laugh. And when you fell into pieces and ate shit. Asterisk, asterisk, Cole. Stop the car. I want you to look good. Natsu was so angry that his throat was on fire. 
After a while of commotion, roads suddenly became serious. Natsu, there are wild boars about eight or nine hundred meters ahead. Five. No, six. Oh, can you see this far? Natsu stood up on the back of the river crab and tried his best to look far away, but the road was not straight and restricted by the terrain and wheat fields. He couldn't see anything. Why don't you try to smell the stink of the wild boar? Rhodes said casually, and Natsu immediately did it. He raised his head slightly and moved his nose. I smell it. Leave it to me. Natsu tugged on the crab's tentacles and said, Charge. Natsu. Rhodes wanted to say that he had a plan to kill the pig, but Natsu rushed too fast and couldn't throw him again. Happy said, Don't worry, Natsu will be fine with the wild boar. Rhodes said, I'm worried that he will burn down the farmland. Love, that does seem like something Natsu would do. Answer the call. Ancient stone beetle. Rhodes sent two groups of stone beetles to keep up with Naz, ready to dig out fire breaks to reduce farmland losses. LVLV, the driver's uncle reined in the horse and stopped. I'm sorry, the area ahead is infested by wild beasts, and the horses don't dare to leave. Rhodes got out of the car and took a look. There were indeed traces of wild beasts raging in the wheat fields beside the road. Maybe it was the residual smell that made the horses afraid to move forward. Let's stop here. The village is not far away. Road said, Happy, get off the car. Isa. Happy flew out, still carrying Natsu's backpack and Road's suitcase. Considering that there were already traces of wild beasts nearby, Road summoned a group of sharp-beaked birds and asked them to escort the carriage for a short distance. Seeing a fire rising not far away, Rhodes and Happy quickly rushed in the direction of Natsu. It's less than a kilometer away, and it takes a few minutes at most to get there, and that's because there's luggage that's holding me back. And in just these few minutes, Natsu had already solved the battle. Six wild boars of different sizes were lying quietly on the ground, and the flames in the wheat field had not yet been completely extinguished. Fortunately, the stone beetles dug out an isolation zone, and the fire did not spread to more places. Ah ha ha ha. Natsu, the culprit, put his hands on his hips and laughed heartlessly. You know how powerful I am, you stupid boar. Happy flew over with Natsu's luggage. Natsu, happy. Rod, you are late. I have solved them all. Ha 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 ha. He was very proud, as if he had won a hunting contest between three people. Happy said. Natsu is very strong, but you almost burned down the whole wheat field. It's not burned. That's because of Rhodes digging insects. It's a stone beetle. Rhodes corrected, and then said to Naz, Please. Can you think carefully when using flames in farmland, forest land, and villages? I have already thought carefully about it. Natsu waved his fist, and a little flame came out from his fist. Use it like this, just enough fire to get rid of the wild boars, Rhodes said angrily. I want you to consider the consequences carefully and don't burn the farmland. Aren't you still here? Natsu said with a smile. Sure enough, Mira said there was nothing wrong with inviting you to form a team. Even if you trust me so much. Even if you mention Mira, I still... That's not right. Rhodes found that he was almost surrounded by Naz. Don't build this weird trust in me. I'm not here to put out the fire for you. Happy looked at the burning wheat straw and asked, What should I do here? Run away quickly before anyone notices. Tell Natsu to eat the fire. Natsu and Rhodes spoke at the same time, then looked at each other in shock and spoke at the same time. Will you eat your own monsters? You actually want to run away? The two of them were even more shocked. Of course you have to run away if you get into trouble. It's not like you can't try. After listening to each other's answer, the two said in unison this time. How can you say such a thing so confidently? Happy saw the two of them talking at the same time. And wanted to say, have an affair. After an explanation, Rhodes suddenly realized. Oh, so Natsu can't eat the fire he sprays or lights. He can only eat other people's. Natsu asked again. So are your wild monsters really edible? Rhodes said, I don't know. I just think that if you are really hungry and can't bear it anymore, you can borrow a crab claw from the swift crab to chew on it, right? Anyway, the crab claws can regenerate. Natsu and Happy stopped talking. How cruel. Rift scuttlers have returned to Summoner's Rift. I'm just kidding. While talking, the fire in a small area within the firebreak zone had begun to become smaller. Wheat straw is hollow, fairly indestructible and does not contain much heat. The six wild boars lying on the ground were blackened. Rhodes told the ancient stone beetles to split up, and then dragged the six wild boars out. After that, the wild monsters were asked to dig soil on the spot. 
fill in the flames, and bury the ashes. Three-dimensional text water. Rhodes waved his hand, and a basin of water poured out, soaking the still warm ground. He repeated this several times to lower the temperature completely to avoid starting a new fire. After doing all this, Rhodes slapped his right hand a few times. He just said that he was not here to deal with the aftermath, but in the end, he dealt with all the hidden dangers left by Natsu. He sighed. Let's go and drag all the wild boars to the village. Ah, uh, why? You have to give an explanation for burning someone's wheat field, but we haven't formally handed over to the client yet. Rhodes was worried that there would be trouble. It's so troublesome, Natsu complained. When he was in this kind of situation, he always went directly to the client to make it clear. As long as the task is completed, few people will care about this process issue. Who caused the trouble? If the stone beetles hadn't been sent here just now, Rhodes didn't even dare to think what would have become of these countless acres of wheat fields. Chapter 67, Part 2 Don't be angry or angry. Rhodes is not angry at all. It's all about the rent. But when you think about how many more of these battles it will take to completely solve the herd problem, Rod has a toothache. Is it best for Gray and Natsu to team up? You can read more daily new novels on FictionZone.net. Both sites share the same login details so you don't need to sign up again. Chapter 68, Part 1 Dendrobium Orchid Village is built about 2 kilometers away from Dendrobium Orchid Mountain. It is right to say that it is at the foot of the mountain, so it is named after the mountain. The Dendrobium Mountain Range has 5 peaks and stretches for dozens of kilometers. Because the mountains are relatively gentle, it provides a good growing environment for many plants and a good living environment for animals. It is said that people rely on mountains to eat mountains and rely on water to drink water. In the past, when the harvest was not good, the villagers of Dendrobium Village often went to the mountains to pick and hunt. At the same time, they would also guard against the wild beasts that occasionally came down the mountains to look for food. Because of this, the villagers cut down wood and used rough wood to build a tall wooden wall outside the village. There are even two sentry towers, one on the left and one on the right, inside the wall and on both sides of the gate. Two members of the Orion team were standing guard on the guard tower. They saw a strange big crab running nearby and then suddenly disappeared. They thought it was because they were too tired and were dazzled. So now they are complaining about why their companions haven't come to change shifts. At this moment, they saw six strange beasts slowly walking towards the gate. Bit you on. A strange beast is coming. I saw it, Mastiff. It shouldn't be a dazzle this time. The young man known as Bit Yuan picked up the bow and arrow. Ring the bell and tell everyone. Wait a moment. There is someone. There is someone on the back of the beast. As the six figures approached, the two guards saw two of the strange beasts carrying a black-haired boy, a cherry-haired boy, and what appeared to be a cat on their backs. Not only that, those beasts are walking backwards because they are dragging something. If you look closely, it seems to be a wild boar. Rhodes noticed someone on the sentry tower pointing bows and arrows at them, and quickly raised his hand to tell the stone beetles to stop. Natsu looked at the man holding the bow and arrow warily, and shouted, We are the magicians of fairy tale, and we have accepted the commission to conquer the beast. When they heard that it was a magician, the two relaxed their vigilance slightly, but Mastiff still held on to the rope that sounded the bell and asked, What's going on with those monsters? It's my magic, used to transport wild boars defeated on the road. Rhodes waved his hand, making the three stone beetles disappear, and the wild boar they dragged fell to the ground. Wei Yuan finally put away his bow and arrows, but then said, Please come closer. We need to confirm your coat of arms before we can open the door. Natsu and Happy jumped off the stone beetle and went to the gate to display their crests, one on their right arm and one on their back. Rhodes sat on the stone beetle and walked forward. He was worried that the opponent would have a brain attack so he immediately pulled Natsu and Happy to escape. Fortunately, this didn't happen. The two guards confirmed that they both had Fairy Tail's coat of arms, immediately turned the winch and raised the gate. This way of opening the door made Rhodes very uneasy. He always felt that the rope might suddenly break when passing through, and then the door would fall and crush him. I'm very sorry, I was so rude just now. Mastiff looked at the stone beetles dragging the wild boars into the door and asked, Excuse me, these wild boars? On the way here, I encountered these wild boars destroying the wheat fields, so I took them away, Rhodes said, but a large area of wheat fields was also destroyed during the battle. I don't know if we can use them to compensate, Mastiff said quickly, so that's it. Please don't blame yourself. If you don't stop them, they will also destroy it. Natsu smiled at Rhodes and said, how about I just say it's no problem? 
Rhodes looked at him and said, No problem. If I hadn't come today, this guy would regret what he said. Rhodes asked Nas to take out the power of attorney and asked, May I ask where Mr. Panzer Leopard lives? We need to confirm the details of the mission with the client. That's the name of the village chief. I'll take you there. Mastiff said, Bit you on. I'll leave this place to you. Bit you on nodded. Remember to call someone to deal with the wild boar? Mastiff waved his hand and walked in front to guide Rhodes, Natsu, and Happy. The village chief's home is located on a street in the center of the village. The main body is a two story building with a large yard attached. Village chief, Fairy Tales Magician is here. Because the door to the courtyard was open, Mastiff shouted outside the door and led Rhodes and the others in and waited in the courtyard. Rhodes took the opportunity to observe the terrain. The yard of the village chief's house is not small. There is a cow sheet on the left side near the door. A cow stands there chewing something. On the right side is the chicken coop. Because it is getting late, there are no chickens running around outside. There will be occasional clucking sounds in the chicken coop. Further inside, there is a slightly crude house on each side, which may be a woodshed and a warehouse. If the situation is urgent, you can ask stone beetles to escape and run away. The courtyard wall is not too high, so you can probably ask sharp-beaked birds to fly out on their backs. It is not impossible to ask river crabs to hit the wall. If you don't have time to call the wild monster, you can also climb over the wall directly by stepping on the chicken coop or climb the cow sheet. Rhodes planned several escape routes and felt much more at ease. At this time, an old man about 50 years old walked out with a cane, followed by a beautiful woman less than 30 years old. The old man has sunken eyes and a sad face. He may be worried about things in the village. The beautiful woman's lips were slightly white, and her face looked sad, as if she had just cried. Are you two the magicians who accepted the commission? The village chief's voice was old and a little tired. There are three of them. Our name is Happy, and he is also the magician of fairy tale. Happy sprouted wings from his back and flew, turning his back to show his coat of arms. Natsu and Rhodes said their names. Sorry, I'm rude. I'm the village chief here, Panzer Leopard, and this is my daughter-in-law, Snow. After the village chief introduced him, he made an invitation gesture. Please sit inside, you three. Bar. Village chief. There is one more thing. Mastiff told him about the wild boar. That kind of thing doesn't matter. Let's wait until the wizard gentleman resolve the matter, and then check whose weed it is. Panzer leaned on his crutches with both hands. Let's do what the wizards want at that time. If it's not enough, it doesn't matter if I pay the compensation. No, village elder. Natsu was the first to retort. We must pay for the things that fairy tales magicians destroyed. Right, happy. Rhodes, you are so proud. This is indeed the rule, Rhodes nodded helplessly. Then it's decided, Mastiff. You go to your own thing first? Yes, village chief. Mastiff left, and Rhodes frowned. He always felt that the village chief seemed a little anxious. Wouldn't there be any problem? Several people followed Panzer and Sino into the living room. The beautiful woman Sino poured tea for them and stood quietly behind Panzer. Chapter 68, Part 2 He picked up the teacup and put it to his mouth, pretending to drink it, and taking a look at the layout of the living room, Rhodes finally discovered the problem. A picture of a grown man hangs on the living room wall, black and white. If you look closely, you can see that Panzer and Snow both have black cloth belts on their sleeves. Were their relatives killed recently by wild? Beast, sir. Chapter 69, Part 1 That's my son Chita, Shino's husband. The village chief Panzer introduced in a low voice, while Sino looked sad. Sorry. Rhodes didn't know how to comfort someone who had lost a loved one. Just like after he learned about Lee Santa, he no longer knew whether he should smile in front of Mira. No, this matter is related to the commission, Panzer said seriously, that's what happened to Chita. So I have to remind you that this is a dangerous mission where lives can be lost. If you are not confident to complete it, or need to reevaluate the task level and reward, I can accept it. The client seemed pretty good. Rhodes said, please give me details. Snap. Natsu slapped the commission letter on the coffee table. The members of Fairy Tale will not give up the mission easily. Please feel free to leave it to us. Rhodes closed his eyes, took a deep breath, and opened his eyes. This be asterisk 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 D is always so reckless. But that serious and confident expression is extremely contagious. The village chief and Shino were obviously infected. And they couldn't help but have the idea that if it were them, maybe they could really accomplish it. But Rhodes decided to ask questions first before making plans. Please tell me in detail. 
The infestation of wild animals should have started a few years ago. In the past few years, the weather has been good near our village, and there has been a bumper harvest almost every year. Correspondingly, the products on the Dendrobium Mountains are also particularly rich, and our gathering and hunting activities have decreased a lot compared to previous years. As a result, prey such as hares, pheasants, cicadeer, and wild goats also increased. From the following year, the number of carnivorous beasts on the mountain also began to increase. Therefore, because the number of carnivorous beasts increased, the number of their prey began to decline again. Rhodes nodded to express his understanding. He understood the positive and negative feedback regulation of the ecosystem and high school biology courses. Needless to say, wild boars are a type that likes to cause harm to farmland at any time. Carnivorous beasts with reduced food supply will naturally come down the mountain to look for food. Their first target is our livestock, but we have tried various methods to fight against them, such as digging traps and building fences. So wild beasts that are difficult to hunt began to attack humans while we were out trading or doing farm work. We also thought of ways to fight back, forming a team of Orions, and took the initiative to ambush at the foot of the mountain to intercept the beasts coming down the mountain, and Cheetah was one of them. Rhodes didn't expect that he could hear with his own ears the struggle between humans and animals for survival, and in such a primitive way. He looked at the photos on the wall, and they were so cruel. Happy couldn't help but ask, did he get into an accident while fighting a wild beast to protect the village? No, you can't say that. The village chief refuted Happy's statement and poked the ground hard with his crutch. He died because he overestimated his capabilities. Father, Shino didn't want to hear him talking about her husband like that. No, dad is a hero. A little girl with a bun haircut burst into the living room. Dad is a hero who protects the village. Dad is not dead. Snow hugged her quickly. Claudie, Grandpa is receiving guests. Please don't be rude. Daddy is a hero but Grandpa is the most annoying. The little girl named Claudia broke away from Sino's arms and ran out crying. Claudia, father. Sino was in a dilemma, wanting to chase her daughter but not daring to be rude. Rhodes said quickly, Please chase her quickly. It is very dangerous for children to run around so late. Snow looked at Panzer's face. Panzer sighed. All the guests said so. Sinuo said I'm sorry and hurriedly chased him out. Sorry, I made you laugh. It's natural for children to worship their father. Natsu didn't know if he was thinking of himself. He asked, What happened to the child's father? That self-righteous one. Panzer sighed, finally unable to bear to talk about his son like that again. He is the best hunter in the village and has always hoped to find a way so that everyone no longer has to worry about being attacked by wild beasts. So he kept participating in hunting and going up the mountain to investigate. Seven days ago, he said that he discovered that there might be something similar to the Beast King on the mountain, and that the actions of all beasts were driven by the Beast King. Beast King? Rhodes had an impression of this word. The Beast King was described in the Magic Creatures Illustrated book, that is not the name of a certain beast, but a powerful monster that has a very small chance of being born in places where beasts gather. It's not just humans who can master magic in this world. Some animals may also suddenly master the use of magic one day, perhaps because they don't have enough wisdom. Beasts that suddenly master powerful power tend to become manic and irritable. They may hunt or rule the beasts in an area. This is the reason why the Beast King was born. Because of this, the Beast Kings do not have a unified image. Some look like tigers, some look like rhinos, and some even look like evil spirits. Tasks of varying difficulty such as conquering monsters and conquering demons that often appear in guilds are often about dealing with these strange animals that accidentally master magic and cause destruction everywhere. The weaker beast kings are just more powerful beasts than tigers, bears, and wild boars. The most powerful beast kings are terrifying monsters that can be compared to S-class wizards. This also corresponds to tasks of different difficulty levels. Rhodes felt guilty when he thought of this. The village chief and the others were ordinary people, so they probably didn't know the specific strength of the beast king, and there was no way to assess his level. What if you meet an S-class? I, a mage who has learned magic for less than two months. Am on an S-rank mission? By then I'm afraid I can only hope that Natsu will explode. The village chief was still talking about what happened next. Chita believes that as long as the Beast King is eliminated, the beasts will lose their leadership. They will fight each other for territory, and then fall into a relatively long period of calm. Even if the animal problem cannot be completely solved, it can at least allow everyone to harvest food safely, and we will figure out a solution later depending on the situation. I advised him to ask a magician to solve the problem, 
but he thought he could do it, and he had to protect his village by himself. Later, we had a big quarrel, and he finally refused to listen to me and went up the mountain alone with weapons, bows and arrows, and then never came back. Several people in the room fell into a brief silence. Although the old village chief complained about his son before, he could not hide his sadness. Happy is willing to think on the bright side. Maybe he just got lost on the mountain, and Natsu gets lost occasionally. The old village chief shook his head gently. Three days ago, a team of hunters who tried to find Chita brought back his broken clothes, broken bows, arrows and weapons. Love. Happy lowered his head. I'm sorry. That's his own choice. If I were 20 years younger, maybe... Bang. Chapter 69, Part 2. Natsu's fist hit the coffee table, causing the cups on it to jump. Let's go up the mountain now and beat the beast king away. The village chief said hurriedly, No, it's already so late. You are still running all the way. Please rest for a night before. Dang 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 dang. The alarm bell rang rapidly, and the quiet village began to become lively. Chapter 70, Part 1. A herd of beasts is coming. With this rhythm of ringing the bell, there may be a lot of them. The village chief explained the meaning of the bells and said calmly, But the walls of our village are very strong, so don't worry. No, it is our mission to conquer the wild beasts and protect the village. We cannot pretend that we don't know when the other party comes knocking on our door. Natsu stood up and clenched his fists. I'm already on fire, Happy. Like, Happy understood. Wings sprouted from his back, grabbed Natsu and flew out. Natsu in the air said, Let's go first. If we are late, you won't be able to get there, Rhodes. Rhodes was too lazy to answer. I wish I didn't have any part in it. I provided you with mounts along the way and helped you deal with the aftermath. It's very tiring, okay? Mr. Rhodes, the herd is in danger. Your companions, don't worry. Natsu is very strong. Rhodes said, I have to take the first step. Excuse me. The village chief was worried that he would fly away at once so he hurriedly stopped him. Is there anything we can do to help? So, there is really one thing. Rhodes thought to himself that he actually had to be reminded by the village chief before he could remember it. He was too imprudent and was almost led astray by Natsu. Please feel free to say so. Please organize the villagers and prepare more water, sand and other things that can be used to put out fires. What? Rhodes said, Natsu uses fire magic, which is powerful but also prone to accidents. So please inform the villagers in advance. It is best for every household to be prepared. I see. The village chief nodded. He didn't know much about magic, but fire magic must be very powerful when used to deal with wild beasts. Answer the call. Crimson Bill. Rhodes summoned a crimson sharp-beaked bird, mounted it and flew towards the entrance of the village. It feels very different to fly in the sky and see the ground below, especially riding a strange bird. Even though he didn't fly high, it should be said that luckily he didn't fly high. Rhodes knew that he wouldn't die if he fell from this height. Otherwise, he would have to carry an umbrella bag anyway. The villagers had been alarmed by the ringing of the bell. Some ran towards the village entrance with weapons or farm tools in hand, while others ran towards the village chief's home. Rhodes passed the running villagers in the air and attracted the attention of many people. I heard that the village chief hired a magician. Is that the one? But soon, their eyes were attracted by other things. In the direction of the village entrance, a red fireball fell from the sky and landed in the center of the herd. Rhodes saw Natsu's figure clearly and criticized him from the bottom of his heart. It was too unsafe to jump directly from such a high place. He jumped onto the arrow tower from the back of the sharp-beaked bird and let the sharp-beaked bird fly out to attack. Mr. Sorcerer, the person guarding this arrow tower is Wei Yuan Bear, one of the two people who welcomed Rhodes and the others into the village earlier. The unlucky kid was forced to work overtime even before his shift changed. Thank you for your hard work. The angry one is my companion. You have seen it. Please tell everyone not to shoot arrows randomly. Yes. Wei Yuan agreed, then said worriedly. But is it okay for your companion to rush into the middle of the herd alone? It was dark, and Rhodes could barely tell that the size of the beast group exceeded 50, but it was difficult to judge the specific species of beasts. Through Natsu's firelight, he could clearly see that the few people surrounding him were wild wolves and leopards. The one hit by the bolide falling from the sky just now is a tiger. Don't worry about him. If you want to help, bring more torches. And prepare some water by the way. Rhodes arranged some chores for the villagers without permission. However, this obviously did not make them feel at ease. 
there were still many people carrying bows and arrows on their backs, or climbing up the arrow tower, or setting up long ladders and leaning on the wall. Fire Dragon's Iron Fist? The hook of the Fire Dragon. Natsu had fun outside the wall, punching away a wild wolf, and kicking away a cheetah, as if he thought this was not enough. Natsu opened his arms, and the flames spread from his wrists into the air, forming a pair of flame wings, and flapped them like a fire dragon. Fire dragon's wing strike. The five wild wolves were thrown away by this move, their hair ignited with flames, and they fell to the ground wailing and rolling. So strong, so strong. That's magic. That's the power of wizards. If we have this kind of power, we don't have to worry. Naza's active performance opened the eyes of the villagers and made them confident. After Happy completed the task of releasing Naz, he flew to the arrow tower to find Rhodes. Rhode, aren't you going to fight? Rhodes said, I'm fighting. Liar, you are obviously standing here. Rhodes shook his head and sighed. Who said that only those who stand in the light are heroes? We don't understand. Rhodes pointed to a slightly dim place. In fact, a group of his sharp beak birds and a group of shadow wolves were already fighting. The crimson sharp beaked bird used a move called flying feathers to shoot a brown bear into a dartboard with flying knife like feathers. It's a pity that after the same attack hit the rhinoceros, only half of the feather could be penetrated, so it couldn't cause too much damage. However, the crimson sharp bill lives up to its name as a sharp beak. It can penetrate the belly of a rhinoceros after flapping its wings and sprinting. The performance of small sharp beaked birds is poor, but it is enough to deal with wild wolves and the like. As for the shadow wolves, they are currently biting a fighting giant python. The python is dripping with blood and can only make a death struggle. I am a summoner. It is not my job to fight on the front line. Do you understand? Happy realized that Rhodes' fighting style was far less conspicuous than Natsu at night and that his wild monsters might be regarded as beasts to attack by the villagers. But since you don't want to fight by yourself, why do you want to learn fighting from everyone else? To give the enemy a surprise when he thinks he can easily kill me by bypassing the wild monsters. So cunning. Rhodes grabbed Happy's face. How can you use cunning to describe your own people? They are smart and cautious. Love, Rhodes let go of Happy. Besides them, I also sent two river crabs to patrol around the village wall. I'm very busy. After all, no one stipulates that wild beasts can only attack the main entrance. Other directions are also worth paying attention to. Happy watched quietly for a while and then asked, Why don't you send out those stone beetles as well? You have a lot of questions. Rhodes said, If you let too many wild monsters go out to fight, my magic power won't last long, and I'm very tired today. Releasing all the wild monsters in one breath can only result in a burst, just like the magician who sneaked up on the two ghosts that day. As long as he had enough magic power to protect himself, the continuous combination of attacks that day was considered a relatively powerful explosive combo by Rhodes. If you want to fight a protracted battle, two or three groups are most appropriate. Chapter 70, Part 2 Thanks to the efforts of Natsu and the wild monsters, the number of incoming beasts decreased rapidly. This was the first time that the villagers participated in such an easy defensive battle. They just had to watch. Chapter 71, Part 1 Mr. Rhodes, the torch you mentioned is ready, but Wei Yuan looked at the fighting situation at the scene and wanted to ask if it was no longer needed. Rhodes said, It's just the right time. Throw all the torches out the door. Bit Yuan nodded. I understand. Is it used to attack the remaining beasts? No, throw them all at Natsu. Ah, uh, hurry up and do it. Road urged. The battle is almost over. If you don't throw it away, your preparations will be in vain. Yes. Wei Yuan directed the villagers to throw the torches outside the door, but in the end, they did not dare to aim at Natsu. They didn't understand what Rhodes meant, but Happy knew it best. He flew over the wall and shouted, Natsu, the delicious food is coming. Natsu turned around and saw dozens of torches flying in the air. Oh, that's great. Natsu jumped up and jumped towards the torch in the air. When he was close enough, he opened his mouth and inhaled, and flames flew into his mouth. There were two that he couldn't eat, and he reached out and grabbed them. When he landed on the ground, Natsu's cheeks were already puffed up. He chewed a few times and swallowed. Rhodes doesn't understand why he still chews something like flames. Is he afraid that there are fire bones in it? Eat it. Can actually eat flames. So fire magicians can eat fire? The villagers looked at Rhodes one after another. If the fire magician eats fire, then this magician who controls wild beasts. Strange knowledge increased. 
No wonder just two of them dared to take on such a mission. Natsu put the torch in his hand like a lollipop and stuffed it into his mouth. He took a few bites before throwing away the stick. Thank you for the treat. He wiped his mouth and his whole body was suddenly enveloped in flames. After eating it, your strength will surge up. Natsu took a deep breath and breathed out a large amount of fire from his mouth like the breath of a fire dragon. The fire dragons, roar, the violent flames swallowed up all the remaining beasts like a whirlwind, rendering them incapable of fighting. It almost affected two small rhinoceros birds. Rhodes slapped the railing on the arrow tower and said angrily, Natsu, pay attention to your own people. Ahahaha. Natsu grabbed his cherry-colored hair with one hand and apologized heartlessly. I'm sorry, I can't see clearly in the dark, it's a little too much, and it doesn't hurt, right? Rhodes didn't believe him. This be asterisk 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 d must have been so careless because he knew in advance that the wild monsters would not die. Otherwise, Happy would have been roasted long ago after being with him for so many years. Happy felt a chill behind him. Rod, I feel like you are thinking about terrible things. Rhodes refused to admit it. It's nothing. To win the battle so quickly, you are worthy of being a wizard. The villagers were surprised by the magician's fighting power, and some people unconsciously added the honorific title. Bit Yuan was a little dazed, as if those torches were used like this. Well, Mr. Rhodes, what should we do now? Rhodes said, open the door to put out the fire. Didn't I tell you to prepare things? The wall will be burned down soon. Ah, uh, yes. Wei Yuan shouted immediately, open the door, put out the fire, and protect the wall. Oh. Fortunately, the main battlefield was on the road, so the flames did not spread too widely and the intensity of the fire was not too large. Otherwise, we would have been busy today. The villagers raised the gate with a winch and went out to put out the fire with buckets and carts filled with sand and soil prepared in advance. When the fire is not big, doing this kind of thing is much safer than facing the herd of animals. Rhodes used Hesia's vision to survey the situation around the village and discovered that several wild beasts were running past in the other direction. But they didn't seem to be coming to the village, but simply passing by. The village chief did not wait at home, but went to the entrance of the village on crutches. Thank you for your hard work, is anyone injured? Village chief. Thanks to the wizard, no one was injured at all. Natsu came in through the gate, and Rhodes jumped off the arrow tower with Happy. The village chief expressed his thanks on behalf of the villagers. This is our mission. Rhodes said, I want to confirm something with you. Are there any other villages nearby? The village chief shook his head. No, the nearest village is dozens of kilometers away. That's strange. Where are those beasts going? Just running around? Rhodes could only take back the other wild monsters first and send a river crab to chase them and take a look. The three of you have been running all the way and immediately joined the battle. Thank you for your hard work, the village chief said. There shouldn't be anything else going on tonight. Please come to my house to rest first. Then excuse me. Rhodes was completely rude. He was really hungry. Natsu had an unreliable suggestion. Rod, why don't we get rid of all the beasts on the mountain in one go? Stop making trouble. There is a mountain stretching for dozens of miles. You can't finish it without sleeping at night. Rhodes advised and suddenly said warily, You don't want to set the mountain on fire, do you? How is it possible? If you want to burn the mountain to solve the problem, you don't need to release the commission. Natsu denied it. I just want to solve it quickly. Rhodes nodded. Oh, why don't you go by yourself first? Happy and I want to have a delicious dinner first, take a comfortable bath, and have a good sleep. We will go to the mountains to find you tomorrow and give you a cold breakfast. Happy agreed. Love, you too. Natsu muttered quietly and kept up with his feet. Rhodes discovered a new way to communicate with Natsu. The dinner at the village chief's house was very sumptuous, and three chickens were specially killed to entertain them. In fact, just treat them to the meat of those beasts just now, it's enough anyway. But the village chief may have thought it was impolite, so he still used his own things to entertain the guests. While eating, Rhodes paid attention to the movements of the beasts and found that they seemed to be really running around. They even parted ways halfway. Very strange. At night, Rhodes, Natsu and Happy rested in the same room on the second floor. It's not that the village chief's house doesn't have spare rooms, but that Rhodes feels it's safer to live together. He slept relatively lightly in a strange place, which was just enough to prevent Natsu from sneaking out to cause trouble in the middle of the night. Before going to bed, Rod took Naz and Happy to have a strategy meeting. 
Tomorrow, I will first send Shadow Wolf and Swift Crab to reconnoiter the mountain to find the whereabouts of the Beast King. No unauthorized actions are allowed before then. It's so troublesome. Can't we just go up the mountain to look for it? No, the villagers can't judge the strength of the Beast King, so they can't provide information. So we have to find out ourselves. Rhodes said seriously, if it exceeds our capabilities, I will immediately abandon the mission and return to the guild for help. Rode, how can you easily? Love, we agree with Rhodes. Happy, even you said so. Because what Rhodes said makes sense. Happy touched the small green bundle on his back. There was a fish hidden in it that Rhodes secretly gave him. Chapter 71, Part 2 The three-person team is now two to one. So listen to me, Rhodes said. Now start to sleep well and recover your strength. Natsu fell asleep angrily. In fact, Happy has a more effective method of persuasion, but he doesn't want to mention it, so it's good to mess around with the decision. You can read more daily new novels on FictionZone.net. Both sites share the same login details so you don't need to sign up again. Chapter 72, Part 1 Oh oh, Rhodes, who was accustomed to living in the city, rarely heard a rooster crow in the morning. He lifted the thin quilt, stood up and opened the curtains to take a look. It's not bright yet, and there seems to be a thin layer of fog outside, which gradually fades as the sun peeks out. Slight snoring could be heard from behind, but Natsu and Happy were sleeping soundly. Their lack of energy was both worrying and enviable. Therefore, Rhodes tiptoed around the two of them and walked to the door so as not to wake them up. After thinking for a while, he stepped back, squatted down, took a deep breath, and shouted between his two heads, Wake up! Seeing Natsu and Happy bounce up and rub their ears outwards, Rhodes also laughed heartlessly like Natsu. Be asterisk 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 d rod. Natsu and Happy rushed over, and the three of them struggled. When the three of them went downstairs to have breakfast, one of them had a black eye. The village chief thought they were injured last night, but it was dark and he couldn't see clearly. After a hearty breakfast, Rhodes summoned Worm. Today we are going out to investigate the situation on the mountain. I will leave this at your home. If there is an emergency, just tell it go back and I will get the signal and rush back as soon as possible. The communication method is backward, so Rhodes has to use this method. Poro is much more intelligent than other wild monsters, consumes less magic power, and is not good at fighting so he is best suited for this kind of thing. This was what he decided last night when he suddenly felt Worm returning to the Howling Abyss. Worm looked at the surrounding environment. It was not a familiar home or guild, so he had some objections. However, as long as Rhodes gives it clear instructions, it will also follow it, not counting when it is usually fighting with its companions and asking it to help. At the village chief signal, Snow picked up Worm and said, I will take good care of it. The three of them turned around and left just in time to see the little girl Claudia they had seen yesterday, showing half of her head outside the door, looking at them timidly. After noticing that she had been discovered, Crowdy quickly hid back. Rhodes didn't take it seriously. As he walked out, he told Natsu not to be impulsive if something happened. Just as the three of them were about to step out of the courtyard, the little girl mustered up the courage and ran over. Excuse me. The three of them turned to look at her. Crowdy's courage seemed to be exhausted all of a sudden, and she asked weakly, Excuse me, can you defeat the monster on the mountain? Rhodes asked as gently as possible. Do you know about the monsters on the mountain? Crowdy nodded and shook his head. Dad said there is a leopard monster on the mountain. The upper body is a leopard and the lower body is like a human. It is as tall as two people. Its teeth are as long as chopsticks. Its mouth is as big as a basin. Its tail is thicker than my arm and it has a very long mane. As she spoke, Claudia began to sob, tears welling up in her eyes. Dad said the monsters on the mountain are like that. Dad's wish is to defeat the monsters and protect everyone. Dad asked me to be obedient and wait at home. He will be back soon. But, but, Natsu put his hand on the little girl's head, stopping Claudia's cry. Then you have to continue to be obedient and wait at home. I will fulfill your father's wish. Tears welled up in Claudia's eyes. She stared blankly at Natsu's back as he turned away, her vision becoming increasingly blurry. In order to see this warm big brother clearly, Crowdy tried hard to wipe the tears on her face with her arms. Rhodes sighed secretly and silently made a plan to sneak attack Naz in an emergency and pull him underground and take him away. He knew that Natsu's adoptive father suddenly disappeared one day and never returned. It would be difficult for Natsu to remain indifferent to such a thing. Moreover, the little girl's tears were indeed touching. Rhodes felt sorry for the child, 
but he could not lose his cool. Happy, please pay attention to Natsu for a while, and don't let him do anything stupid. Love. Happy didn't have much confidence. Rhodes summoned two river crabs and a group of shadow wolves to speed them up. The beasts I stared at last night really just found a jungle to hide in, and they also cautiously explored new territories and looked for places to live, which was puzzling. Rhodes could only suppress his doubts first and analyze the information he had just obtained. The information about the Beast King was provided by the little girl Claudia and dictated by her father. Taking into account the possibility that part of the information is lost and part is exaggerated during the transmission of information, the information cannot be fully trusted. The most effective information now is that the opponent may be a leopard-like monster. Leopards, according to their racial characteristics, are likely to be speed and agility opponents. Dealing with this type, Rhodes thought of Jet. The stone beetle should come in handy, and the sharpbill's covering strike might also be useful. I haven't gotten the antidote for the demon swamp frog yet, but if you use it against the enemy, it doesn't matter. Just be careful not to affect your own people. Rhodes and Happy catch up to Natsu and catch him at the foot of the mountain. Rhodes had already inquired with Wei Yuan and Mastiff about the general terrain of the mountain. If he rushed up there, he might get bitten by a poisonous snake, which would be a lot of fun. The more you want to help Claudia, the more you have to stay calm. If something happens to you, the child may never trust anyone again in the future. This kind of persuasion was barely effective. Natsu sat down cross-legged and crossed his arms. How long will it take? Wait until I find it. Rhodes connected the river crab's vision. The first one has climbed to the first peak. I haven't seen anything unusual for the time being. The shadow wolf is trying to find the breath of the beast. To prevent Natsu and Happy from being impatient, Rhodes dictated what he saw through the river crab in real time. After searching for half an hour, a grizzly bear walked down the mountain. When he noticed two people and a cat, the grizzly bear became slightly wary. But after it compared its body shape, it no longer feared and pounced on it. Natsu stood up and punched his palms, just in time. Signs of battle. Rhodes finally discovered that there was the remains of a wild boar on the ground, which had obviously been eaten by some animal. The exposed ribs and spine were broken, and it was uncertain whether they were caused during life or after death. The shadow wolf sniffed the scent, chose a direction and ran away, followed by the river crab. Trees, rocks, flowers and plants passed quickly in Rhodes' field of vision and stopped at another place with traces of battle. This time it was the corpse of a wild wolf. The body was bent in an exaggerated way and the spine must have been violently broken. The shadow wolf had no intention of harming its own kind. It sniffed forward and then ran to the next place. So Rhodes saw the corpses of tigers, grizzly bears, cheetahs, and other beasts. Each one seemed to have been beaten to death with a blunt instrument. The scene was very cruel and weird. If the beasts in the mountains die due to fighting, then most of the wounds should come from bites. Chapter 72, Part 2 There wouldn't be that many beasts that use blunt blows, right? You can read more daily new novels on FictionZone.net. Both sites share the same login details so you don't need to sign up again. Chapter 73, Part 1 After beating the grizzly bear to the ground with a continuous fire dragon punch, Natsu was relieved a lot and sat back down to quietly listen to Rhodes' live broadcast. Found it. After seeing one battlefield after another, Rhodes finally saw a monster. It's similar to what Crowdy described, but not as exaggerated. It was indeed a leopard man, and his image was somewhat similar to Rob Lucci from the pirates set next door. It's just that this beast king's limbs are thicker and his face is more ferocious. The leopard man was holding a wild wolf by the throat with one hand, throwing it to the ground with a flick of his arm, and smashing it down with the other hand. The ground nearby seemed to shake, and the wolf's back snapped with a snap, and he died wailing. With such a fighting method, it is obvious that the previous tragedies were also caused by it. The leopard man looked up to the sky and roared angrily, staring at the surrounding wolves with his scarlet eyes. The wolves that originally surrounded it began to retreat, then turned around and ran wildly. The direction in which they fled was exactly the direction to Dendrobium Orchid Village. Happy listened to Rhodes' narration and asked, Why did the Beast King kill those beasts? Li Wei? It may have just killed the wolf, and now the entire wolf pack is afraid of it. Rhodes thought for a while and said doubtfully, This is how the Beast King drives the beasts down the mountain? I thought just roaring would be enough. Natsu bumped his fist. No matter what, we just need to kill it, right? Rhodes grabbed him and said, Wait a minute, the shadow wolf has been discovered. With the entire wolf pack retreating, the three shadow wolves standing still stood out. However, 
This was also part of Rhodes' plan. He sent Shadow Wolf to eliminate the search together, also to test the opponent's level. The Leopard Man roared and charged towards the Shadow Wolves. The Shadow Wolves spread out in tacit agreement, with the two-headed wolf facing the enemy head-on, and the ordinary wolf flanking them on both sides. The two river crabs slithered away and acted as high-definition cameras from different angles. Rhodes used dual cameras and dual perspectives to stare at the Leopard Man's movements and calmly assess the opponent's charging speed. It doesn't seem to be fast. The Leopard Man charged forward, taking advantage of his height advantage, and punched the two-headed wolf on the back, as if he wanted to resolve the battle with one move. But the two-headed wolf reacted quickly enough, nimbly jumped out sideways to accumulate strength, avoided the punch, and immediately rushed back to bite the Leopard Man's wrist. The two ordinary wolves saw the right opportunity and pounced together to bite the leopard man's other arm. Rhodes wondered if it would be better if two more stone beetles grabbed its legs. But things are not that simple. You must know that the shadow wolf is similar in size to a tiger. This leopard man can actually run while dragging a large shadow wolf and two shadow wolves. And he can also raise his arms and smash the shadow wolves onto the tree trunks. Bang! Bang! Two large trees with a diameter of 30 centimeters were smashed and the shadow wolves were forced to open their mouths. The two-headed wolf quickly rolled several times on the ground to distance itself, lowered its body, and let out a low roar. The two ordinary wolves struggled a few times and stood up precariously. They probably wouldn't be able to hold on for long. The leopard man stared at the two-headed wolf, raised his arm, and licked it. There were several rows of blood holes on both of its arms, and part of the flesh had been torn off where the two-headed wolf had bitten it. Although he suffered some injuries, the simple and crude attack just now showed the great strength of the Leopard Man. The Leopard Man who had licked his wounds seemed to become more ferocious and re-entered the state of attack. The two-headed wolf jumped left and right, approaching the Leopard Man in a zigzag manner, and suddenly jumped up, this time directly towards the neck. The Leopard Man raised his right arm and slashed hard between the two heads of the two-headed wolf, knocking the two-headed wolf to the ground. Before it could pursue it, two ordinary wolves pounced on it without fear of death, but were punched by the leopard man and sent back to the summoner's rift to sleep. The two-headed wolf took the opportunity to retreat, its claws gently digging at the ground. When a small pit was dug out, it rushed out, took a few steps, and quickly spun its body like a whirlwind, crashing into its opponent, Wolf Fong. When he knew that the two-headed wolf had this skill, Rhodes immediately gave him this name. This move was so powerful that he didn't even dare to try it in the guild. It's a pity that the leopard man is more powerful. He opened his hands and pinched them between the two open wolf mouths. Part of the wolf's teeth sank into the back of the leopard man's hand, but he could not continue to bite. The leopard man was pushed backwards for a short distance by the impact of this move, but in the end he was not seriously injured. The scene after that was a bit cruel, and the two-headed wolf was also sent back to the canyon to sleep. The leopard man didn't seem to understand why these wolves disappeared after the fight. He roared a few times and continued to look for new targets. The Shadow Wolves were defeated, but Rhodes was not depressed because according to his observation, the Leopard was far from strong enough to reach S-level. Even without Natsu, he might be able to win it with a burst of force on his own. No, it's floating. It cannot be ruled out now that the opponent will transform into the second stage after being beaten anxiously. But at least you can give it a try, as long as you have a complete retreat plan. Rhodes told Naz and Happy his analysis. That's pretty much it. So we set off now. Do you need to make any preparations? Already ready. Natsu jumped up and started climbing the mountain at the first step. No need for Rhodes to show the way. Natsu remembered the smell of river crabs. On the way up the mountain, Rhodes was still talking about his raid plan and retreat plan. He told Naz about the raid and happy about the retreat, focusing on teaching students in accordance with their aptitude. On the way up the mountain, as expected, they encountered a pack of wolves that had just been driven over by the leopard men. Natsu and the wild monsters quickly resolved the battle. Rhodes and Happy were responsible for cheering and reminding Natsu not to go all out. You guys are so annoying. Natsu began to complain after the battle. Why don't I help fight when you have time? Happy raised a hand. Love, we have more important tasks. Rhodes also raised a hand and imitated Happy's tone. Love, we just defeated more wild wolves than you. You too. Natsu was angry and had nowhere to vent his anger so he could only hurry on, hoping to find the location of the Beast King as soon as possible. The three of them clambered over a hill, and sporadic beasts kept rushing out, but they were all knocked down one by one by Natsu and Rhodes. 
It took more than an hour for the three of them to finally arrive at the place where the three wolves fought with the leopard man. The other party was no longer here, but a beast roar came from the pine forest not far ahead. Natsu looked at Rhodes, and Rhodes nodded, indicating that he was there. Chapter 73, Part 2 Two river crabs lurked in the forest with good protective color, like two big blue stones, silently providing Rhodes with a clear view. Rhodes summoned two groups of stone beetles and a group of sharp-beaked birds, asking them to fight with Nas. He was carried by Happy and flew up to the tallest tree in the forest. To be honest, being carried around by Happy makes me feel insecure. Chapter 74, Part 1 Face to face with the Beast King mentioned by the village chief, the other person's magic power was revealed without any concealment. Natsu didn't feel any pressure, but instead geared up. I'm telling you, Rhodes, you're thinking too much. How can this guy be S-class? It's not comparable to Urza at all. After seeing the Beast King with his own eyes, Rhodes hugged Happy in the tree and nodded. This is true, it's hard to disagree. Natsu was still comparing. And it's not even comparable to Mira. This, isn't it a bit too much with Mirabi? Happy said. Natsu is talking about the old Mira. Before, Mira was very strong. Love. Mira used to be an S-class mage, and she fought with Urza all day long. Exclamation point. The gentle image of Mira emerged in Rhodes' mind. She? Fighting with Urza? This is a bit of a challenge to his imagination. Love. The two of them used to be just like Natsu and Grey now. Rhodes' brain was a little down. He mentioned Lasana's matter yesterday and wanted to ask about Myra's past. But considering Happy's mood, it's hard to say anything. Today? Oh, Fire Dragon's Iron Fist? Okay, I'll ask again after I finish. Natsu's fist collided with the Leopard Man's fist, making a dull sound. There was a big difference in body size between the two. When Natsu's fist was wrapped in flames, it looked about the same size as Leopard Man's fist. But in such a fist fight, Natsu did not fall behind. There was a brief stalemate between the two sides, and then they retreated. The leopard man's fists were a little scorched, and Natsu's feet dragged out a shallow mark. You're quite capable, you guy. Natsu clenched his fists and charged forward again. The leopard man seemed a little hesitant, but when he saw the opponent coming to attack, he naturally attacked him. Roar, the two of them were constantly exchanging punches and kicks, sometimes attacking and sometimes blocking. The leopard man is very powerful, and every move he makes carries extraordinary power. A single blow from an ordinary person would probably break his bones. Natsu's every move is filled with flames, which brings powerful destructive power and explosive power to his attacks. Even if he blocks successfully, it is easy to leave burns. After more than a dozen moves, Natsu originally wanted to try to take advantage of the difference in body size and adopt a more dexterous attack method. But the leopard man's characteristics are not as long as that of a leopard. Although he is large, he is also quite agile. Fire Dragon's Flaming Elbow An elbow strike with enhanced power by flame jet knocked the opponent back two steps, and Natsu also quickly somersaulted twice to distance himself. This was the prearranged opportunity to take action, and strange birds, one large, five small and six, flew out from several nearby pine trees. The big one suddenly flaps its wings in the air and shoots out dozens or hundreds of flying knife-like feathers. The younger ones also ejaculated one each to join in the fun. The leopard man raised his arms to protect his vital parts, and dozens of feathers were tied on his arms, shoulders, and legs. Roar! The leopard man roared, smashed a big tree next to him, and swung it to fly away the sharp-beaked birds that were swooping towards it. Two ancient stone beetles broke out of the ground. One hit the leopard man's back and made him lose his balance. The other clamped the leopard man's waist with its mouth parts from the front. The leopard man swung the big tree in his hand half a circle and threw it backwards, knocking down the stone beetle behind him. Then he let out a loud roar. His arms seemed to be a little thicker, and he beat and elbowed the guy who was holding it. Natsu, who should have taken this opportunity to attack, made no move at this time. The leopard man has beaten the ancient stone beetle into two stone beetles. Stone beetle, cling to it. Rhodes didn't know what Naz was thinking, but he had a backup plan, and there was a chance of another group of sharp-beaked birds. If that doesn't work, you can still risk going to the demon swamp frock. Rhodes held the pendant on the branch of the tree. Answer the call? Wait a minute, Rhodes. Natsu suddenly stopped. Rhodes frowned and asked hurriedly, What's wrong? At this time, you don't have to be one-on-one, -on -one, right? However, during this period of questioning, the leopard man knocked away a stone beetle that was blocking the way, 
jumped onto a pine tree with his legs, jumped again, and fled quickly. Okay, no need to rush this time. Happy flew down with Rhodes. What are you doing all of a sudden, Natsu? If you keep fighting, you will win immediately, Natsu said dully. That guy is not the Beast King at all, Rhodes said. But its characteristics are completely consistent with the Beast King. That's of course, because the Beast King was completely accepted by him. Natsu emphasized, it's him, not it da. Isn't it possible to receive? Rhodes thought of a possibility, but it was too ridiculous. Happy asked, what's going on? Although that guy has the smell of a lot of beasts on his body, there is still a smell that I smelled in the village chief's house. Natsu thought that was the smell of Chita who had been missing for eight days. Judging based on smell alone is definitely untenable, Rhodes said. But Chita went up to the mountain to defeat the Beast King. It's not surprising that the Beast King got the smell after fighting him. And how do you know that it was receiving magic? Natsu said seriously. During the battle, and when he used his arms to smash the stone beetles, the way to use that kind of magic is to receive magic, and I will never admit it. Why? Rhodes wanted to ask why Natsu was so familiar with receiving magic. And the analysis just now almost made him suspect that Natsu had been switched. We believe Natsu. Happy's tone also became serious, and he also explained for Natsu, because Mira, Elfman, and Lee Sana all use receiving magic. Therefore, Natsu will not admit his mistake. Rhodes was silent. He sat cross-legged on the ground. He had heard a lot of heavy news in the past two days and needed to sort it out. First of all, Mira had a sister named Lisanna, but she unfortunately died last year. And Mira was once an S-class mage, the kind who could compete with Urza. Moreover, the three Strauss siblings all use receiving magic. Finally, according to Happy, Lisanna and Natsu have a good relationship, so Natsu is also familiar with receiving magic. Based on this familiarity, Natsu was able to determine that the Leopard Man Beast King just now was actually Chita, who had been missing for eight days, who used receiving magic to take away the Beast King's body. According to Rhodes' understanding, receiving magic is a magic that can seize the target's body and use it for oneself. However, if the person using the receiving magic is not strong enough but wants to forcefully receive it, he may be affected by the other party's will and lose his mind and act involuntarily. This is consistent with the strange and irritable behavior of the Beast King. But something still doesn't make sense. Can anyone sustain receiving magic for eight days? Chapter 74, Part 2 Rhodes said, if he really received magic, he should have died of exhaustion on the first day, or fainted due to lack of magic power and recovered to his original state. Chapter 75, Part 1 Who knows about that kind of thing? There are so many weird things in the magical world, and not every one of them can be explained. Natsu didn't care how the other party did it, he just wanted to solve the matter. In short, Rhodes's battle plan cannot be used. Yeah, Rhodes' plans A, B, and C were all aimed at killing the Beast King. This is the difference between missions such as defeating monsters and sweeping out thieves. One requires death, while the other must not be killed easily. The monsters we need to defeat now may be ordinary people who were transformed by magic, so we can only capture them alive and find ways to help dispel the magic. This was why Natsu stopped Rhodes just now. I accepted a commission to defeat monsters and ended up beating the client's son to death. There is no way to accept it. Unlock the receiving magic? Rhodes could think of three ways in a hurry. The first is to wait for the opponent's magic power to be deactivated automatically, but this situation may not be applicable at the moment. The second is to find something called a magic sealing stone, which can prevent magicians from using magic. Rhodes has never seen the real thing, but the description in the book is somewhat similar to the seafloor stone on the pirate set next door, but it is not as hard. Before the Magister's Guild appeared, ordinary people used that thing to compete with and persecute the Magisters. Nowadays it is mostly used as the prison of the Senate. This thing won't be available for a while, and three magicians fighting with the magic seal stone. It's too ridiculous. The third is the simplest and crudest method. Beat the opponent until he completely loses his fighting ability or even loses consciousness. Then the magic will naturally be released. This is the most suitable method for the current situation, but you will be a little constrained when fighting for a while, and you can't beat people to death, nor can you beat people to disability. This is not a big problem, as long as the person is not killed on the spot and dragged to Ms. Porla Yusika. Basically, no matter how serious the injury is, a small life can be saved. Okay, let's do it like this. A fight can solve the problem. 
which is the method that suits Natsu's heart the most. He jumped up, swinging his arms to start, but just running in place. Because Rhodes grabbed the back of his clothes, Natsu turned around. What else? Have a rest before going back? Rhodes said, wouldn't you feel insecure if you run around without recovering the magic power you just consumed? Natsu looked confused. Why do you feel insecure? It's hard for me to explain to you that you are so reckless. Rhodes decided to communicate in another way. He pointed to the prey provided by the Beast King in the woods. Barbecue? Do you want to eat it? Natsu thought for a moment. Eat? Happy raised his hand. We want to eat fish. Rhodes, a terrain reconnaissance expert, pointed in the direction. There is a mountain stream over there. Go try your luck. You can also deal with prey there. The three of them found an open space by the water, gathered some stones, formed a circle, and made a fire to barbecue. Happy made a simple fishing rod to fish by himself. Before the meat was cooked, Rhodes couldn't help but ask the question he had been holding back all along. What was Mira like before? Did she learn to receive magic? Natsu was playing with a branch poking at the firewood in the fire. When the branch was lit, he took it back and stuffed it into his mouth to eat like a lollipop. Hearing Rhodes' question, Natsu wondered, Ah, huh? why do you suddenly ask this? I'm a little concerned. She clearly said that she's not good at fighting. I heard that Mira used to live in a very remote village. In order to help the people in the village defeat the devil in the church, she accidentally took in the devil. Then she was ostracized by everyone as a devil and left the village with Elfman and Lee Sanna to join the guild. Natsu was calmer than happy when he mentioned Lee Sanna, but he accidentally bit off a branch in his mouth. After joining the guild, Elfman and Lee Sanna began to learn to receive magic. Then for some reason, Mira competed with Urza all day long and became stronger and stronger. At that time, the two of them, Natsu gave a gloating smile, both of them are so scary. Gray will get beaten up badly no matter who he offends, huh? Rhodes glanced at Natsu. If Gray was beaten, this person would definitely be punished as well. And to put it this way, Mira is also the kind of genius who can master the magic that suits her best? What happened to the S-Class Mage? Mira passed the S-Level exam two years ago, and Urza passed the S-Level exam three years ago. Natsu remembered this kind of thing very clearly, but his boss was unhappy when he talked about it. The old man has been refusing to let me take the exam. Damn it, I want to become S-Class too. Rhodes felt that the president must have his own considerations, either that he thought Naz was not strong enough, or that he was not stable enough. This is not something he has to worry about. The point is that Mira really was once an S-Class mage. If this is the case, many things that made him feel a little strange before will make sense. For example, why Rod and Lucky can't go up to the second floor, but Mira can go up at any time. Why is she qualified to be the president's assistant, even when she is actually doing the president's work many times? Why she can accurately judge the difficulty of various tasks and evaluate whether the person taking the task has the ability to complete it? Why is it that every time she watches the battle between Rhodes and his companions, she can accurately describe the advantages and disadvantages of both parties? Why did Happy immediately become afraid when he saw Mira getting angry before departure? It all makes sense. Because she was once very strong. Hmm. And my temper at that time might not have been very good either. As for the reason why Mira became weak, Rhodes guessed that it might have something to do with Lee Sanna, but he didn't ask in detail. It would be too much to ask Natsu about this matter. He planned to go back and ask Urza or Kana quietly. However, Rhodes did not expect that Naz would actually take the initiative to talk about this matter. Last year, Mira took Elfman and Lee Sanna on an S-class mission to defeat the Beast King. Yes, the Beast King. Natsu stared closely at the fire in front of him, as if he could see the scene at that time. S-Class missions must be led by S-Class wizards before they can be accepted. Mira and the others are certainly qualified. But the strength of the Beast King was beyond imagination, and all three of them exhausted their energy in the battle. In order to protect Mira and Lee Sanna, Elfman forcibly accepted the Beast King. But he lost control and Lee Sanna, Rhodes' eyes widened. He thought that there was an accident during the mission that caused Lysanna's death, but he never expected that it was Elfman who gave Lysanna to, as a sister. Mila must have been so desperate when she watched her out-of-control brother kill her sister, and how painful Elfman must be after he wakes up. He was obviously a hero who defeated the devil and protected the village, but he was driven out of the village by the villagers. After finally settling in the guild, I encountered such a cruel thing. Why does fate treat this family so harshly? Chapter 75, Part 2. Natsu punched the ground. So Rhodes. 
This mission must be completed. I will never let that guy who also accepted the Beast King hurt my family. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. You can find the next videos in the playlist linked in the info card, directly on my channel, or right here on the screen. And as always, if you have any feedback, feel free to share it in the comments too.